the irony how things how things repeat themselves. When the elder, former elder, left out of here, his wife took information that she got and she spread it through the body to defame the elder. The personal conversations she had with the elder's wife and so forth, all of that came out, all of that. To defame the leadership. Nothing new. And brothers survived it. And the school was damn near split in two. Because some went with him, some went with the elder. Most went with the elder, some went with him. And then his congregation fell, it fell, fell apart. Because the same evil he left with, he, it remained. And the people who left us to go with him said, yo, you was right. And that never fails. The deacon up out of here, people left with him, they said, yo, you was right. It never fails. This is, JC had a rap lyric. He said, brother, brother, brother that was with us, he witnessed that. He was, he was in the elder's house. They did that little uh, Lord of the Flies trilogy did on YouTube. Three hour long trilogies or whatever. He, Lord, of, yeah, Lord of the Flies. He did, he did this, his little uh, movie, right? He watched that. And yet we're partial. Then, on top of that, you must understand, you've been around long enough to, you've been around long enough to see that we deal with things in order. And so many of you who are new are not aware of that stuff. You're not aware of that. But these things have been done before. You survived it then, we'll survive it now. It's not going to change anything. And those of you who are around to see that, you're going to see other captains fall off. You're going to see other officers fall off. It happens. God forbid you may see others. You never know. God forbid. But things happen for a reason. Now, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. So if you're up there saying to brothers, yo, man, he left? I don't know, man. Something wrong. You need to go. You need to go like now. Like just walk out now. You need to go. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. So I, I pointed it out for a reason. You had many brothers, very few brothers were around back then that are still around today. Many, there's many more. It wasn't just the brother raised their hand. We had many more. They're gone. We lost many. We had pictures of, we had pictures of feast days and half the picture meant and the picture is gone. You don't remember their name. You know, right. I, remember, I, I honestly don't remember their name. I don't. You don't even remember their name. Hey, the among the brothers, I think, is it hundreds or thousands? I can't. But is the among the brothers came through the door and leave almost everybody from the beginning that started with us left. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody that, that was at Bishop Bishop Nathaniel House, everybody left, man. In my building where I grew up in, ASAP was teaching everybody before you we went to the elders' house. Out of all the people he taught in my building, I'm the only one I left. Only me. It was me, no, it was me, another brother. And he came here, he went off. He left. Only myself. So was, I've seen it before. I've seen it before I even got here. I've seen people come in and fall off. Something new. But some of y'all brothers, this is you. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. You must do that on your own. We can't force you to do that. You must examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Go ahead. Know ye not your own selves? I don't know you enough. You know you know you better than you. Go ahead. Know ye not your own selves of that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. Reprobates will say things like, I built this. I know it's a rap lyric. I think Jay-Z said, Jay-Z said, Negroes say they made Jay-Z. Yeah. yeah, he said. they. Well, they make say, another one. They say they, say they make who, well, I say make another home. Make another Make home. another one. Who, so who, if you built IUIC, it? build another one. I don't know. That's some code like If you built IUIC, build another, build another one. Build another one. Build another one. You, no, you'd rather sit back and watch us online instead because you know you had you can't you lack the ability to do that. So you just sit back and watch and take notes like you've been doing. Even before you left. And after you left. But that's what brothers do. They they claim they built something and they can't even build their own. But they sit back and watch those who they learned from to begin with. But it shows the devil's on them. But again, that goes that goes back to being reprobate and not examining oneself. When you know when you spend years and years, a decade or more, without examining yourself, you become reprobate and your actions become unstable. You start doing, you, I hate them, but I'm going to learn from them. They're wicked, but I'm going to learn from them. It's, a, it's something wrong with you. You're psychologically unstable. Something's wrong with you spiritually. But that's not normal. If, you're, if we're wicked and we're evil, why are you watching us for? What is the purpose? Do your own thing. S start again. Build out your IC again. Your own. They can't do it because it's not us. It's them. But when you're wicked, what happens, Satan tells you, it's not you, brother. It's them. You're not the problem. They're the problem. 
like an like a abusive husband. I'm not beating you because I'm abusive. It's you. You're making me mad. It's your fault. That's what niggas do. <laughs> it's not the crack. I'm not a crackhead. I just smoke crack from time to time. I don't like crack. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You understand? So as the brothers do you reprobate, you don't see your own fault. You fault everyone else to take all the guilt off of yourself. That's what Jake does. They do, they've been doing it for years. That's what the elders have done that left out of here. That's what the deacons have done that left out of here. The captains have done that left out of here. It's an ongoing thing, and you're going to continue to see it. If you can't stand to see that, you need to go. Go to a congregation where all are righteous, no one ever leaves, everyone's in perfect harmony, there's no problems. Go to that congregation. And when you find it, show me so I can go there too. I want to see that. I want to see it in my own eyes. That sounds amazing. Give me Ecclesiastes 20 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 20 and verse 1. What happens is that many of us in this truth, a lot of you brothers, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of brothers have withstood the, length of the, um, the test of time in terms of the trials, tribu tribulations, congregational, music, congregational, marital, and what else? Personal. And personal. Many brothers who raise their hand have withstood those, those things. You brothers who are newly coming in, you newcomers, you, you young brothers, novices, you're still learning. You need to learn to be quiet and humble yourself and just follow instructions because you've, you've yet to experience anything. You're brand new here. Whether in here or out of state, those of you who are watching, the same goes for you. But what happens is when you're in this truth, you're going to experience situations like this. Sirach 20, verse 1. Sirach chapter 20, verse 1. There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. So there is a correction that is not always the kindest correction. Some correction will come, you'll be mad as hell. You'll feel like you're being disrespected. You'll feel like you're being talked down to. You'll feel like you want to punch your brother in the face. Because in the streets, yo, man, what'd you say to me, man? I ain't your kid. But in this truth, you are a child. You were born again. You are a kid all over again. And oftentimes in this truth, you're going to make childish mistakes. And you're going to get corrected for it. Many times you'll, you'll find yourself being corrected, whether it is directly or you'll find yourself being corrected indirectly. Many of you brothers who've left out of here are offended because you felt like a statement was made and it was, even though your name wasn't mentioned, it was an indirect statement against you. Let me make it very clear. Watch this. When you open the Bible, everything in that Bible that's a law is an attack against you. What do I mean? If you are a drug dealer, the Bible is indirectly talking against you. If you are an idolater, the Bible is indirectly talking about you. If you are an adulterer, the Bible is indirectly talking about you. If you hate your, if you are violent towards your parents, if you are a pimp, if you are a whore, if you are homosexual, if you are effeminate, weak, the Bible is talking about you indirectly. So do you throw the Bible away? I can't follow that book. It's talking about me. That's why many of our people hate the Bible because it has things in there that they know that's me. I don't like that. I ain't doing. I ain't following that book because it has laws in it that make you feel what convicted. It's a book of conviction. And so if you can't take indirect criticism or scriptures, you don't, you're in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. Because every word in this book is an indirect criticism against you. Every word. You're battling a, a thieving spirit. It's talking about you. Thou shalt not steal. It's talking about you. If you're battling an adultery spirit, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's talking about you. If you're battling idolatry, crack, cocaine, whatever, that's idolatry of the gods and so forth. That's talking about you. So if you're offended by indirect statements, the Bible is not for you. It is not for you. Read again. There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. Verse 2. It is much better to reprove. It is much better to correct someone. Go ahead. Than to be angry secretly. Than to be upset with them secretly. So if I have an art with you or issue with you and I bring it out directly to you, the Lord's saying that's better than you, than you holding it in and over time begin to do what? You begin to despise me, hate my guts. And brothers who've left out these doors, whether from presently, from the present, and from the, to the past, well, from past to present, that was their issue. They had an issue with a brother 
or brothers for a long time, and rather than correct, they hold it in. And then they hold it in, and it becomes resentment. And that root of bitterness takes, takes root, takes um, sprouts out, and consumes them to the point where they're unreachable. Now you can't talk to them no more at all. Now they're rambling. Now they're doing videos. Now they're losing their mind. Not on different doctrines. This, that's what happens when you, don't, when you don't reprove. Read again, verse 2. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. Go ahead. And he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. The brother that acknowledges he's done the wrong shall be preserved from hurt. If he does not acknowledge he's done wrong, over time he will fall off as well. Because he's being prideful at this point. Next verse. How good is it? When thou art reproved. The Bible says, how good is it when you are reproved, when you are corrected? Go ahead. To show repentance, for so shalt thou escape willful sin. Because oftentimes in our mind, our mind is, 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 is um, deceitful, deceptive. So oftentimes you need brothers around you to tell you, listen, bro, you're going off. Something wrong. You go, you're going off. You have brothers. I'm going to give you an example. You have brothers amongst us that were amongst us, I'm keeping no names, who had a marriage that was very, I thought I mentioned earlier, way, way back, poisonous. Their wife would walk up in here looking miserable. And I would ask them, bro, are you all right? Everything all right with y'all? Everything's fine. Everything's fine, D. Everything's great. You sure? Yeah. Wife walking around, sitting there, moping. I said, yeah, everything's up. I'm looking at his wife. You sure? Yeah. Everything's fine, D. Everything's good. I said, okay. Now she's gone. Now it's our fault. Who you told her to leave me? No, he didn't. He did not. But, but what happens is that guilt, that, that, that sense of failure overcomes them. They go, damn, I, I destroyed my house. Satan goes, no, brother, it wasn't you. It was them. It was them. Yeah, God, it was them. Satan's like, yeah, I'm God. Yeah, it's them. That's what happens. And so that's delusions. And so brothers start to have what I, what I consider to be a mental breakdown. They start talking reckless, doing crazy videos. I'm illegal. I'm crazy. I stole money. Then we're right. Then we're wicked. It's craziness. I stole money from brothers. Okay, brother, keep the money. Oh, man, you're wicked. You want me to keep the money? You're wicked. How? You stole the money. Publicity stunt. They're wicked. They're losing it. Satan got them. They're filled with Satan because they didn't examine themselves. Get me uh, Psalms 141, verse 5. Like my job says, I use all, my job said all the time, <laughs> we don't fire you. You fire you. You fire you. We didn't ruin your marriage. You ruined your marriage. How do we know that? Correct. The Lord says, where God is joined together, let no man put asunder. If you're a righteous man doing the work of the Lord, how can a man come into your household and destroy your marriage if you're the good man of the house. Scriptures also say, he that troubled his own house shall inherit the wind. So are you B, troubling your house, or are you A, the good man? If you're the good man of the house, the man can't go in there and take, and take it apart. But if you're a reprobate, you can't tell the difference. So now it's everyone's fault. Oh, you're wicked. You told her to leave me. No, brother, we didn't. That's your own actions. Because what God joined together, no man put asunder. But again, when you reprobate, the Bible is out the window. And emotions take over. Controlled by the devil. Psalm 140, Psalms 141, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 141, and verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Let the righteous smite me. Meaning hit me. Correct me. It shall be a kindness. Because what you feel... Smite means hit you, to, stru to, um, to strike you. So in your mind, you're like, yo, why'd you hit me, for? You hit me for? Now realizing that it's a kindness. Read on. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. And let him correct. That's the smiting. Because oftentimes correction is not always what? Calmly. Like Sirach said in chapter 20. It's not always the best correction. It's not going to come at you. Shalom, brother. Listen, don't do that. Sometimes you're going to get cursed out. You're going to get blasted. You're going, to get, you're going to get spoken on because you're going to get yelled at. Because even though you're being smitten, it's a kindness. So what? To stop you from doing what? From willful sin. Read on. It shall be an excellent oil 
which shall not break my head. It won't kill you. It may hurt. It may piss you off. You may be angry for the moment. But it's not to destroy you. It's, it will not break your head. It won't kill you. So no matter how harsh or severe the punishment is, it will not kill you. But oftentimes you have certain individuals that cannot take even that correction. They're too emotional. They're too mentally unstable. Raised by the moms. No father around. So it's a soft spirit. Oh, no, I, no, I don't like being yelled at. Why are you yelling at me, brother? Why are you, why are you yelling at me? Listen, bro, stop. But that's what happens. They can't even take the, the correction alone. They see, they see it as hatred, as evil. Read on. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. I mean, my, my prayer will always will still be in their afflictions, regardless. Give me Matthew 16 and verse 1. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Now, brothers are offended because they feel, damn, man, he said so-and-so about me, and the, my peers got ear to it. And because my peers heard it, they might look at me evil. Watch this. Okay. So because you were blasting in front of brothers for, for whatever a case may be, you feel like, oh, the other men are going to look at you sideways because you were blasted, directly or indirectly. Matthew 16 and verse 21. Matthew 16 and verse 21. From, the, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So Christ explained to the disciples, listen, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be killed by, by, the, um, by the elders and the people who support them. These things are going to happen. These things must happen. Y'all follow? Y'all follow so far? Don't be, in the day, don't be daydreaming all that stuff. I hate that. Y'all understand? Yes, Go ahead. Then Peter took him and... Then, be on, then Peter heard what he said to the disciples. They were all present at the time. Peter took him over to the side. Go ahead. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. And began to blast Christ for saying those things. They ain't going to happen. What? They going to do what to you? You, you bugging. Something wrong with you, man. It ain't going to happen to you. Go ahead. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. This shall not be done to you. That ain't going to happen to you. I got you. I got your back. That ain't going to happen to you because Peter was gangster. Peter was not soft. The disciples was warriors. They were not scared. They said, nah, ain't going to happen to you. I ain't going to let it go down like that. Go ahead. But he turned and said unto Peter. Now, listen. Let me give you a scenario. I'm telling you that brothers are going to. Try to kill me, hurt me. And you say to me, bro, I got your back. It's not going to happen to you. I got you. Now, you will say, wow. You will feel like, well, that's my friend. Wow, he's at my back. If anything happened to me, you feel happy to know that a brother will tell you he got your back of someone trying to kill you, right? Calmly speaking, naturally. Anyone in here had an issue like that? A brother come to you and say to you, hey, man, something happened to you, man. I got your back, man. I got you. Worry about it. I got you. I'm going to hold it down. That's your ride or die. That's your boy, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Watch this. Next verse. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Stop. Wait. Get behind me, Satan? So now I turn around and say, man, you the devil. After you told me you got my back, anything happened to me, I say, man, you the devil. You feel disrespected. What do you, what do you mean? I said, I got your back. I'm going to look after you. You feel some type of way for someone saying that to you. After you just said to them, I got your back, they say to you, man, you the devil. That will have you confused. What do you mean? What are you saying? Read it again. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. You're talking stupid. Go ahead. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You're being emotional. This has to be done. You understand what I'm saying to you? This has to be done. I don't need your help. You got the devil on you. Now, let's get Mark 8 and 31. We're going to read it again. Mark 8, 31. Mark 8, verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. Him getting spit on, slapped, beaten until his bones are showing. Beard ripped off his face, crucified for hours. He told him all those things. Read on. And be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. Go ahead. 
And he spake that saying openly. And he said it openly for all of them to hear, disciples. Go ahead. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Go ahead. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. Stop. So the disciples, his peers, were present when he said that to Christ. They were right there. Go ahead. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Now, I'm trying to find where the Christ Peter say, oh, man, listen, I'm offended. Matthew 18, Christ. I'm by Matthew 18. I'm offended by what you said. That's not in the Bible. It ain't in there unless you're soft and weak and emotional. Understand, Christ Peter was rebuked for saying something that you don't naturally say. You're, being, you're telling a brother, if anything happened to you, I got your back. P Christ blasted Peter in front of his peers directly. We have to learn this truth to not be emotionally moved by small things. For example, we have an example with myself as an example. The elder will say to me, walk up to me, go, hey, man, what's going on with you, man? I'm good, D. I'm good, elder. I'm good. Yeah. Stay in the spirit. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Well, I'll stay in the spirit. And I'm all confused. Now, the emotion of me will say, hey, how are you talking about? I'm good. But the spiritual me will say, you know what? He sees something. I'm good. I understand. I keep, thank you, elder. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, but, you understand what I'm saying? That's what he does all the time. A deacon, now, um, can, can I use you for example? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to use you as an example. Come on. No, no. They, every, brothers already know. So, you know, this, this is a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, thank no. You, thank you. Okay, all right, all right. Appreciate you. Anyway. that's me. Anyway. Read on. Read on. Right. The point is. <laughs> I got embarrassed real bad by the elder. Real bad. Okay. Real bad. I'm, I'm going to leave it like that. Real bad. And I ate it. I was furious. I was furious. 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 For the whole day, I was mad. And the elder was like, stay in the spirit. <laughs> and I had reason not to be in the spirit. I had a big reason not to be in the spirit. Thank, thank you, Captain. I know you know. Thank you. <laughs> a big reason. But, but again, by me staying in the spirit, that, that day, that milestone was epic. That was the greatest thing we'd done in Israel for a long time. It made us very known. Celebrities saw it. If I got emotional and acted out that day, it would have disrupted everything. I would have walked out. I'm, I'm, I'm walking over there. It would have cost me to stop everything. But I'm staying in the spirit and eating it. Everything went well. It flowed smooth. I got over it. I moved on. It went well. But I didn't allow myself to get emotional, even though I, was, I had reason to be emotional. I said, nah, I'm not going to do that because it's, it's bigger than me. This is bigger than me. We have work to do. I don't have time to be emotional. You have 800 men here that are here to learn and be guided on how to become leaders. It's beyond me. I'm going to eat it. It's whatever. And move on from it. And I learn from it, and that's it. But some brothers, and like I said before, can I build like that? I'm from the time of the elders' apartment. <laughs> Y'all brothers is new. Y'all, God, he yelled at me. Hey. Soft and girly. Women here got more balls than you. Some of you in here. Oh. Some of y'all here soft as hell. Ain't online too. And you hate just watching y'all soft too. Hey. Don't emasculate you. You don't have no balls to emasculate. You have no balls to begin with to cut off. Damn. Go ahead. Hey, one of the one of the bishop that left, right? The bishop that left in the beginning when we was at Bishop Nathaniel House. He always used to tell me, he always, yo, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. He always he always used to say to me, he said, listen, man, you gotta get thick, you gotta have thick skin in this street. Mm -hmm. That's what he always used to say. He said it to you too? Yeah, yeah that's one of the bishops that that end up leaving. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, he, he used to tell me when I was young, I was like what, 22, 23? He said, listen, man, in this street, you gotta have thick skin. You gotta have thick skin. You understand? Because if you don't have thick skin, you know, guess what? You're gonna easily be offended. Because the scripture said, offense gonna come. You understand? Who is he? The, so we all must, you brothers must learn to have thick skin, man. You understand? You That weak, emotional spirit, you all can't have that spirit on you. I don't know if the bishop remember, but this is like the second time I'm meeting him. You know, I had him waiting outside in the car for like half an hour. He, he, when I got to his house, he like, yo, man, you got the devil. He cursed me out. I'm like, I got the devil on me. I'm like, yo, whatever. You know what I mean? How is <laughs> You know, but the thing about it, you got to have thick, thick skin, man. You know, so when you get corrected, when you see brothers get corrected and they bug out and they leave, that's because brothers do not have thick skin. You understand? 
You know, that's because you 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 got that weak, emotional, sen- central spirit. That's the spirit you're rolling in. You understand? And that's not the spirit of Christ. You understand? When you get corrected, the scri- Deacon Iton brought it out in the scriptures. It says, when you get, all, not all correction is comely. You understand? Some correction is rough. You might say, damn, why these brothers talk, brother talk dumb to me like that? Mm-hmm. You know, some of you all, we're going to let you all know you, you do some dumb stuff. We're going to correct you. We're going to let you know, listen, man, that's some dumb stuff you just did. You understand? So, you know, you, you brothers, do not be emotional, man. Get rid of that sensual spirit. And when we do that, is, because, is it because we hate you? No. You understand? It's not. That's love. That's love, man. Remember what Christ told Peter? He said he must suffer many things. The Son of Man must suffer many things. Get First Peter real quick. I'm DBA for a second. First Peter 2. First Peter 2, verse 21. Because brothers are mad because they feel like they're being accused of something that they're, that they're not guilty of. Right? Watch this. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even here unto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us. He did what? Christ also suffered for us. For us. Because he understood that what he was going through was bigger than him. Go ahead, for his people. Go ahead. Leaving us an example. What did he leave us? An example. He left behind for us an example. Go ahead. That ye should follow his steps. What were his steps? Read the next verses. Who did no sin, neither was, neither was guile found in his he mouth. He was an innocent man. Watch this. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not, reviled was, not again. He was spoken evil of. He didn't say a word. This guy is an idolater. This guy is a blasphemer. This guy is so-and-so. He stood quiet. He said nothing. And he was an innocent man being sentenced to death, a horrific death at that, a horrible death. He was, this, what he got was an ancient lynching. I'm going to say it again. He got, he received an ancient lynching that lasted hours and knew he was innocent and said nothing. Didn't say a word. Knew they were all lying on him, slandering him. They brought up false witnesses against him. They said they brought up two False witnesses to get them killed. He knew they were liars. He ate it. That's an example. Read on. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened when not. When I come back, I'm going to kill you niggas. He didn't say that. He said he just, he just hung there. I know this is bigger than me. He did ask the Lord, if you can, remove this cup from me. Because at that moment, he started feeling, okay, I'm going to die now. Because he knew what was going to happen. So, Lord, if it be your will, remove this cup from me if you can. But it, he couldn't, because that was his lot. But he didn't say a word. He didn't threaten nobody. Yo, man, yo, you know, you killing? You know who I am? He ain't do no, he ain't do no chain day. He ain't do that. Super. You know who I am? Super. <laughs> King Kong ain't got sh- He ain't do that. <laughs> he ain't do Alonzo. He ain't do that. He stood quiet. I know it's other you, Lord. It's other the Lord. Read on. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. But committed himself to who? To him that judgeth righteously. His father. Put it in his father's hand. Some of your brothers put it in a recorder. Can I record the conversation? No, put it in the Lord. God don't need your help. He got it. He made recorders, remember? He made, he made your voice. He made conversations. Read on. Who his own self bear out. Bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, but whose stripes you will heal. So my point is that the Messiah himself, who was an innocent man, who was slandered, lied upon, accused of being a hypocrite, all the above. You know, he was innocent. Many back then thought he was guilty until he rose from the dead. They was like, oh, damn, you really was who you said you was. Because for years, they thought he was, they thought, for that moment, he was the devil, when he wasn't. Sometimes it takes time for the truth to come out. You gotta, sometimes you got to take it in. You got to eat it. You got to develop tough skin. A man may come against you, slander you, say the devil, and you'll be an innocent man. And you sit there, you eat it, and we kind of realize, you that guy lied on him. He said that about him. This guy got a pat on the line on people. Okay, so you were innocent the whole time. And we blast the Lord reveal things. But brothers are not patient in the Lord. They rather take them out. They're they, they, they going to force the course to the river. No! God's taking too long. Recorder! No, there's a God. 
You don't believe in them. That's the problem. You don't believe in them. That's why you're gone. Let's get um, Shalak 22. Sirach 22, verse 20. Verse 20. Sirach chapter 22 or Ecclesiasticus 22, verse 20. Whoso casteth a stone at the birds frayeth them away. Uh -huh. And he that upbraideth his friend breaketh friendship. So occasionally you may lose your temper, curse your brother out. Because, again, we're human. Man is fallible. Man makes mistakes. I've heard it from a brother that was wise amongst us. You seek perfection in others. You have imp well. I'm paraphrasing by imperfection and perfection, and so forth. He used that, but she applied it. Damn. But nonetheless, that statement was used. You expect perfection from us when you yourself suffer, imp suffer imperfections. Read again. Whoso casteth the stone at the birds frayeth them away. Right. And he that upbraideth his friend breaketh friendship. He that what? Breaketh. But he that upbraideth his friend breaketh friendship. Right, I mean, you, know, you lose your, your friend gets mad at you. You lose your friend. Go ahead. Though thou, though thou drawest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not, for there may be a returning to favor. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation. Meaning what? You can, you can fix things, patch things up. I made a mistake. Brother, I apologize. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I shouldn't say it to you. And so on and so forth. Go ahead. Except for abrading or for, go ahead. abrading or pride. Or what? Pride. So you cannot reconcile with your friend if, if there's abrading between he starts cursing you out or pride is on him. And, he, he, and rather than trying to reconcile, he holds it against you. Holds a grudge against you. I'm still mad at you, but I'm, I said I'm sorry. That ain't good enough. Well, what do you want me to do? Cut my stuff off and put it on the table? What do you want me to do? What you want? Slip my wrist? Oh, God, I'm sorry. Slip my, hang myself? Brothers up, you have brothers on, who are much in high ranking positions who are now brothers on video publicly saying, brother, if I, if I wronged you, I apologize. Then he see Facebook. That apology was weak. He was acting. Man, the hell with you then? Evil. Evil. The hell with you? Evil. Like Laba says, drop dead and die. It is what it is. Die yesterday. Or repent. You can use that against me. Or repent. One or the other. But the brother apologize, and if he's, and if he's acting, the Lord knows. If he's sincere, the Lord knows. But you don't believe in him. That's why. Read again. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation, except for abrading or pride, or disclosing of secrets. Right. Now, get me Proverbs 25 and 6. So we're going to deal with the part that says reconciliation and pride. We're going to deal in that vein. Proverbs 25 and verse 6. Oh, what I've noticed now is that over time, when brothers get corrected a certain way regarding certain scriptures, when they were with us, they understood what it meant. And then when they're gone, it mutates into something else. Like, for example, you have brothers out with us that put their, put a brother out and said, brothers, Romans 16, put them out. Then when it came to them, that's not what it means. I don't get it. Then have issue each other, Matthew 18, brother, I apologize. Then it come to you, that's not what it means. Now it changes now. And it concerns you, now it changes. Let's see where Matthew 18 came from. Proverbs 25, let's see where the Messiah got Matthew 18 from. Proverbs 25 and verse 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 6. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, we're going to stop from there. We're going to lead up to Matthew 18. Read verse 6 again, I'm sorry. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. Don't try to exalt yourself as if you're equal to someone of higher position than you. Go ahead. And stand not in the place of great men. Don't try to put yourself equal to men that are elder than you. You have men that left out of here for that same reason. I never saw him as an elder. I never saw him as a spiritual father. I saw him as a brother. Read verse 6 again, please. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. You see, real men understand that, even in the world, carnal gangs understand captains and so forth. In the truth, I don't I, we're all brothers. We're all the same. But in the police department, 
in the foot in, in the teams, in, in, in the hospital, you have the doctors, you have nurses. But when it comes to the truth, we're all equal. Really? So the janitor in the hospital can perform surgery like a doctor can? So I can go to the janitor. I don't need a doctor. Janitor, the mop, you. Take this blood out my chest. Take the blood out my chest. No, we ain't doing that. He's not a doctor. You understand? In life, there's always a chain. She king of the jungle, the lion is a chain is a chain. So to say, oh, we're all equal, that's not nature. Nature don't work that way. It's such a thing as equality. That's how things work. That's how God works. Even as many angels in heaven. Christ is the top one. They don't all say, you're an angel, I'm an angel. We're all equal. That ain't in the Bible. Right. Christ is the firstborn. He made everything. He, Satan answers to the Lord. I'm Satan. I'm, I have my own men here. We're equal. Michael, Gabriel, me, Christ, we're all equal. If it's not like that in the heavens, how in the hell is it like that here? Where you get that from? Korah. I'm, I'm sorry, what your name is. Read again. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. Seven. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither, than thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. It's better that someone asks you to come up forward, and you go, yeah, yeah, I, I know, I, I'm, I'm special, I'm going to go up there. King goes, hey, who the hell are you? Sit, sit over there. You got to make sure you're called first. You got to know, in other words, you're saying, know your place. That's what Solomon is saying. Know your place. You're not a king. You're not the great man. You're a, a, a younger, younger man. Sit yourself down somewhere. Go ahead. Go not forth hastily to strive. Then he goes on to another topic. Go not forth hastily to argue, to strive, to fight. Go ahead. Lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Because you're trying to fight. He's trying to, he's trying to resolve the situation. You're still trying to battle. He's saying don't do that. Read on. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. He didn't say take your debate with your brother and broadcast it for the whole world to hear. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what it says here. Read again, please. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Debate your cause with your neighbor himself. Go ahead. And discover not a secret to another. Do not disclose the information or your debate to other people that you have with that one brother. That's law. That's what the Bible says. I'm not sure what it says in the YouTube world or Facebook world you're in, this imaginary retard world that you're living in. But in the Bible it says, discover not to another. Between you and him alone, not you, him, and his mama. That's not what it says. Read on. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame. And thine infamy turn not away. Because now people know you as a snake. Now you slick. Oh, you recording conversations? That you can't trust that nigga over there. I can't trust him. Now you infamous now. The whole world knows that you are a, a snake now. That you can't be trusted in conversations. Because you on the other side like this. What you say? Yeah. Hold on a second. What you say again? That's how people know you now. That's how I know you. Now you can't be trusted at all. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse uh, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. I read that earlier, between thee and him alone. Now I was in Proverbs 25, verse 7 or 6. Let me verse 8. 8, 8. 9. Thank you. Verse, verse 9. 9. Go yeah. ahead. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Hold on. No, alone. I want alone first. Yes. Um, get, get me on, me on. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If, you, if he hears you, there's no pride, there's no upbraiding, there's reconciliation. You've gained your brother, like it said in Sirach. There's reconciliation, there's no pride in him, no anger in him. You've gained your brother. Problem solved. Resolutions established. You're good. Go ahead. Verse 16. But if he will not hear thee. But if he is not listening to you because of that pride, that anger, that bitterness that's, bitterness that's in him or her, she will not hear you. Go ahead. Then 
Take with thee one or two more. Then you must now bring forth counselors, officers, whatever the case may be. Go ahead. One, two more. Go ahead. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Between the party, between the one that the issue and the one, that, and the one they're trying to resolve it with. All right? Now watch this. Where do you get that from? Two, three witnesses. Get Deuteronomy 19 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 19 and verse 15. Let's see where he got two or three witnesses from. Or did he just make it up? Deuteronomy 19 and verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity. One witness can't say a word against anyone. At all. None. Read on. Or of any sin. Or for any sin. I saw a brother steal so-and-so. Okay, well, that's just you. Anyone saw it? No. And you can't, you can't entertain it. Brother said so-and-so. Was there a witness? No. Then we can, you can't entertain it. One's not enough. Must be more than one to go against a brother. Read again. One witness shall not rise against... One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So there has to be more than one. So if, you, if I witness an evil and I say I saw it and there's no one else I can bring forth that also saw it, it's dismissed. It is not, not a, one witness will say, well, damn, that's not fair. I saw him do so-and-so. And, and there's no one else that saw it. That's not right. They'll hold the grudge. But understand, I'm going to prove to y'all that there is a God. Even if there's one witness and there's not other two or three that saw it, the most high will reveal it in time. He says, one, not but two or three witnesses, everywhere be established. That's where he got it from. So now, what are you reading to? Uh, read, on, read down, read down. Verse 16. If a false witness rise up, against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. Read again, 17. Then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. So both, it says, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, shall stand before the Lord, mm. shall stand before the Lord. So who's present in this situation now? The Most High is in the presence now. Go ahead. Between the Lord and who else? Be stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. So who's dwelling in the judges at that, at that time, in the priests? The Lord. He's there. He's present. He's there. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay. Go ahead. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And they will investigate the situation. Once there's two or three witnesses, they will investigate the situation. Go ahead. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had brought as he had thought to have done unto his brother, so shalt thou put the evil away from among you. If, it comes, if it's discovered that the brother was lying on his brother, then whatever judgment he was trying to get done to him will be recompensed back to the brother, back to him. You understand? You understand? Can, can you read that one more time again? Then shall ye do unto him... No, before that. Verse 18. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness. So it's, why does it says the judges got to make a diligent inquisition? Why? Because, keep on reading. And behold, if the witness be a false witness. Because sometimes witnesses lie. You all understand? Sometimes witnesses lie. So that's why if you got three witnesses or two witnesses come forward and bring an accusation. Right? Before judges. Any one of you brothers as a leader, you know, if a witness come before you and they say, oh, this brother right here did so and so, right? Now, the two witnesses that come forward, you as a judge, if these two witnesses got a problem with this brother, 
You understand? Do you can you is them witnesses liable? No. Why? Because they got problems with this brother. You understand? It's so biased. we not huh? It's biased. It's what it's biased. You understand? So we as judges, we not gonna listen to these two witnesses. We gonna tell them, listen, let the Lord bring it out. Right. If that's the case, or or let somebody else come forward that that don't have a problem with the brother. You know what I mean? Then we gonna then we could listen to it. Then we could entertain it. You understand? It's a certain way to do things. A certain way, as a judge, you judge matters. And this is what we're learning, teaching you all right now. You understand? How many of y'all watch some court shows? Like Judge Mathis, Judge Judy. Those are great shows to watch. Yep. When you watch those shows, the audience sits back and watches as the judge hears both sides, the defendant and the plaintiff. They hear both sides, right? But the point I want you to focus on is the audience that's listening in on both. So they have the audience in the background, you have the plaintiff, and then you have the, the defendant and the judge there, right? The audience is watching this. Basically, it's, a, it's like a bout, back and forth. They're going back and forth, whatever, and the judge is hearing both sides. Many times, the audience, who's not judging anything, that's just watching, has all this stuff to say. You're the audience. It don't concern you. You're just listening. We're up, when, we, when we're up here judging matters, y'all don't know half the time what's going on. You, you hear the aftermath of what's going on. You understand? You hear the aftermath of what's going on. So the reason why most, hopefully most of y'all is in here is because you know the most high is dealing with us. So if you know the most high is dealing with us and the judgment comes out, you should understand it's no evil behind it. It's the Lord behind it. And what happens is usually a lot of brothers and sisters are impatient when it comes to figuring out if we're right and what we judge are wrong because they don't believe in the Lord. They're, they're, they're hasty. So... For example, I mentioned earlier about how um, elders and, and um, deacons are walked out of here, right? I mentioned that earlier. And people was like, yo, man, he left. Yo, man, something wrong. I'm out. Oh, so-and-so left. I'm going with him. Then it took years. And they spent time with, that, with those brothers that walked out of here. They was like, yo, man, what they said about you? Yo, yeah, it was right. They judged rightly. It didn't take the same day. It didn't take weeks. It took years. But over time, it was like, yo. He wasn't right. And you see this now, since the brothers have been gone, the, the, the large growth, the moves that have been made, you're like, yo, the Lord's dealing with us. All praise to the most high we know, based upon what we, the fruits of our actions, Christ said, wisdom is justified of our children. So you know the most high is dealing with us based upon certain moves we've made over, these, over this past year, the, the milestone, the BT commercials, all of that. Being on the news, all these things that transpired so if you still think that there's wickedness going on up here, you cannot believe in God. It's impossible. I, I, I doubt it. You're either that or you're, just, you're faithless. It's one or the other. It's the same thing. You're faithless. Get um, Matthew 18, 20. So they said earlier, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. Matthew 18, 20. Watch this. Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, uh -huh. there am I in the midst of them. So the Lord is there when there's two or three gathered. The Lord is always present. That's where they got this from. Deuteronomy. Always present. Give me the, the history of Susanna now. The history of Susanna. One of my favorite history. Favorite, favorite, favorite. Because it revolves around Matthew 18. It revolves around Deuteronomy 19. We're going to read the entire thing. For those of you who feel the Lord doesn't work fast enough, I have to provide my own evidence. Just in case this brother may lie or things may get misconstrued. I ain't, let's stop. In the Apocrypha, if you have the Apocrypha, it's page 109. The history of Susanna. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chalcius, a very fair woman. Very beautiful woman. Go ahead. And one that feared the Lord. Go ahead. Her parents also were righteous and taught their daughter 
according to the law of Moses. Yeah, so she was well, she was beautiful and wise. She had wise parents. Go ahead. Now Joachim was a great rich man and had a fair garden joining unto his house. And to him resorted the Jews, because he was more honorable than all others. He was an elder. Go ahead. The same year were appointed two of the ancients of the people to be judges, such as the Lord spake of, that wickedness came from Babylon from ancient judges, whom seemed to govern the people. Yeah, wicked ne Negroes. Go ahead. That were leading the people. Go ahead. These kept much of Joachim's house, and all that any suits in law came unto them. Any suits, like lawsuits, any suits in law came to him, because he judged matters. Go ahead. Now, when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. They were well off. Her and her husband were well off. Go ahead. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking so that their lust was inflamed toward her. Go ahead. And they perverted their own mind. Sorry. And turned away their eyes. That they might not look unto heaven, nor remember just judgments. Which is, thou shalt not commit adultery. Because they're lusting after somebody's wife. They said, to hell with that. She's bad. Let's watch her. Go ahead. And now be it, they both were wounded with her love. Yet durst not one show another his grief. So both these guys were lusting after this man, after Joe Kim's wife. But didn't know both of them were lusting after the same woman. Go ahead. These two elders, go ahead. For they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desired to have to do with her. Yet they watched diligently from day to day to see her. These guys are thirsty. They're watching her every single day. Go ahead, this man's wife. Go ahead, Joachim's wife. And the one said to the other, let us now go home, for it is dinner time. Yo, man, I got to go. I'm going to go get some dinner, man, all right? I'll see you later. Yeah, man, me too, man. I'm out. Both decide to leave. Go ahead. So when they were going out. They, they both pretend to leave. Go ahead. They parted the one from another. And turning back again, they came to the same place. So watch her. Go ahead. And after they had asked one another the cause. Why are you here? Why are you here? Go ahead. They acknowledged their lust. So she's bad. Yeah, man, she is bad. You been watching her too? Yeah, I've been watching her too. <laughs> Go ahead. Then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. Why don't we both have her at the same time? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Let's set it up. Go ahead. And it fell out as they watched it at fit time. She went in as before with two maids only, and she was desirous to wash herself in the garden, for it was hot. And there were nobody there save the two elders that had hid themselves and watched her. Watch it while she was bathing. These guys are demons. Go ahead. Then she said to her maids, bring me the oil and washing balls, and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. And they did as she bathed them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders, because they were hid. Yeah. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, They ran to the bath. Go ahead. Behold, the garden doors are shut, that no man can see us, and we are in love with thee. Therefore consent unto us, and lie with us. And lie with us. These guys is vile. Lie with us. Go ahead. And thou wilt not. You will bear witness against if thee. If you don't lay with us, we're going to lie on you. Go ahead. We will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee. That a man was here. Go ahead. And therefore thou didn't send away thy maids from thee. And you, and you, had, you was having an affair with them. We're going to say if we found a man in here, when you sent your maids away, you'll mess with the guy that was in here that we found. Go ahead. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. I don't to do. It's a, I lose, lose either way. I lose laying with you and I lose if I, if I don't lay with you. Go ahead. Well, if I do this thing, it is death unto me. That's adultery. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. But don't do it. I still get death. But you guys are going to lie on me. Go ahead. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. So I'd rather you guys judge me for lying than, than, than give in to your demands. Go ahead. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. She cried. Go ahead. And the two elders cried out against her. Then... Then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the city in the garden. Heard the cry in the garden. Heard, me, so when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at a privy door to see what was done unto her. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed, for there was never such a report made of Susanna. Go ahead. And it came to pass the next day when the people were assembled to her husband, Joachim, the two elders came up 
came also full of mischievous imagination against Susanna to put her to death. They accused her of adultery. Go ahead. And said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of Chelsea, is Joachim's wife. And so they sent. Now, before I would continue, I want to ask this question. A rhetorical question. We're reading these things about these elders, how they watched her day to day. Today, how they say, I'm going to dinner, you're going to go to dinner. And they came back and realized both of them were lusting after the same woman. How do we, this is between them. So how did all this come out? You understand what I'm saying? These things, this, this, this thing right here with these men lusting after, that was between those two. They didn't tell anybody else about this. It was just these two. So how did all this information come out? That, the, that they were watching her from day to day. They watched the privy doors. They, were, they, uh, they, were, they both conspired together. How did those information come out like this in such graphic detail? Because none of them told anybody how that happened. Continue, watch this. Read on. And said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of Chelsea, is Joachim's wife. So they sent. So she came with her father and mother, children, and all her kindred. So she had children too. And her, and her friends. Go ahead. Her, her family. Go ahead. Now, Susanna was a very delicate woman and beauteous, beauteous to behold. And these wicked men commanded to uncover her face, for she was covered, that they might be filled with her beauty. Yeah, they said, take, the, take that off. Let's take, let's take a lust, take a lust after her during the damn court trial. These guys are demons, <laughs> man. Damn. Take that off! Oh, yeah, it looks so good. Look at her face. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at her face. Go ahead. Therefore... Her friends and all that saw her wept. Uh -huh. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her head. Uh -huh. And she weeping looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. Said, Whatever happens, Lord, it's because of you. I, I can't fight against this. Go ahead. And the elders said, as we walked in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids and shut the garden doors and sent the maids away. This is their testimony against her. We walking by. We, we watch the two maids close the garden doors behind her. She's in the bathtub. Go ahead. Then a young man who there was hid came unto her and lay with her. He came in. He, she let him in and he lay with her. Go ahead. Then we that stood in a corner of the garden, seeing this wickedness, ran unto them. And when we saw them together, the man we could not hold, for he was stronger than we, and opened the door and leaped out. The man got away. Go ahead. That's their testimony. Go ahead. But having taken this woman, we asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things do we testify. You understand how her husband's looking at her at this point? Her reputation right now is tarnished. Tarnished. So she's embarrassed at this point. Saying she's in the whore. She committed adultery. We caught up this young man. No one ain't lying on her. Go ahead. Then the assembly believed them as those that were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death. Go ahead. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting God, that knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be. Thou knowest that they have borne false witness against they're me. They're lying on me, Lord. They're lying on me. Go ahead. And behold, I must die. Now I'm going to be killed now for, line, for them lying on me. Go ahead. Whereas I never did such things as these, as these men have maliciously invented against me. Watch this. And the Lord heard her voice. Who? And the Lord heard her voice. So there was a recording. And the Lord heard her voice. The Lord heard her voice. He saw what evil was going on. Go ahead. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth. Young youth means he was a, this is a little boy. A very little boy, young youth. Go ahead. Whose name was Daniel. Sound familiar? Whose name was Daniel. The same Daniel we all read about in the Bible, Daniel. He's a little kid here. Go ahead. Who cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. This is BS. This is wrong. That's what he's saying. So imagine audience like this, little kid goes, this is BS. Everybody's like, huh? Get him out of here. Oh, that little boy says something. BS. Go ahead. Then all the people turned them toward him and said, what mean these words that thou hast spoken? What you talking about? Go ahead. So he's standing in the midst of them and said, are you such fools, ye sons of Israel? Stop. Stop. A little boy is talking to grown people. Are y'all stupid or something? Are y'all retarded? Read again. Are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel? Watch this. That without examination or knowledge of the truth, you have condemned a daughter of Israel? That without... Diligent inquisition, you judge the sister? What's wrong with y'all? 
Go ahead. Return again to the place of judgment, for they have borne false witness against her. They're lying on her. But turn her back and investigate again. Go ahead. Wherefore all the people turned again in haste, and the elder said unto him, Come sit down among us and show it us, seeing God has given thee the honor of an elder. Yeah, you an elder, little boy. Come on. Show us how, show us how we're wrong in this judgment. Being sarcastic now. Go ahead. Right. Then said Daniel unto them, Put these two aside, one for from another. Separate them. And I have will them go in that room, have them go in that room. Go ahead. And I will examine them. And I'm going to ask them my questions myself. Little boy, I'm going to question them myself. Go ahead. So when they were put asunder one from another, he called one of them and said unto him, O thou that are waxen old in wickedness. You old and evil. You old evil Negro, you. Go ahead. Now thy sins which thou hast committed aforetime are come to light. Stop. The sins that you committed before have come to light. So Daniel's telling him, I've seen what you've done before. This isn't the first time you've done this. So now you know why or who wrote this to know what they were doing before. Watching her from day to day. So the Lord showed Daniel all those things. And Daniel explained to them in the beginning of the chapter what they were doing, lusting after her and so forth. That's who was revealing it. Read again. O oh, thou, thou part, now thy sins. Now thy, now sins. thou sins, mm -hmm. which thou committed aforetime, are come to light. You about to get exposed. Go ahead. For thou hast pronounced false judgment, and hast condemned the innocent, and hast let the guilty go free. Go ahead. Albeit the Lord saith, the innocent and righteous shall thou not slay. And the law says, according to Exodus twenty-three and seven, do not kill or judge innocent people. That's what he's quoting from, Exodus 23 and 7. Go ahead. Now, when if thou hast seen her, tell me. If thou you did see her, tell me this. Go ahead. Under what tree sawest thou them companying together? What tree did you see them banging in under the garden? What tree was it? Did you see them under when they were committing adultery? Go ahead. Who answered? Um, under a mastic tree. Uh, <laughs> a mastic tree. Go ahead. And Daniel said very well. Wow, okay, good. Go ahead. Thou hast lied against thine own head. You lied on yourself. Go ahead. For even now the angel of God hath received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. The Lord's going to kill you. But you're a liar. Go ahead. So he put him aside and commanded to bring the other. And said unto him, O thou seed of Canaan and not of Judah. You Hamite. You call him a Hamite. Go ahead. Insulting him now. Go ahead. Beauty hath deceived thee. Beauty hath deceived you. Your lust hath deceived you. Go ahead. And lust hath perverted thine heart. Go ahead. Thus have you dealt with the daughters of Israel. And, and they for fear accompanied with you. So you've done this to other sisters, and out of fear, they lay with you. Mm. The Lord showed Daniel these things. Before you were banging with the Israel, sisters of Israel, you were doing this is your first time. It is not your first time. Go ahead. But the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. But Susanna was like, I ain't doing that. Israel, Ephraim, sorry Ephraim. Y'all was like, okay, okay, no problem. Judah was like, nah, we ain't doing that. Nah. <laughs> I'm not, Susanna said, nah, I'm not doing that. I ain't doing that. Nah, just kill me. I'm offended. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you want to record it? Hey, you want to record? You recording the conversation? Uh, it's already going. It's okay, already going. I, I thought so. <laughs> we know. <laughs> that, thus have you dealt with the daughters of Israel, and they for fear company with you. Go ahead. But the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. Go ahead. Now, therefore, tell me, under what tree... Didst thou take them companying together? What tree did you see them giving adultery under? What tree? Go ahead. Who answered? Under a home tree. I thought it was a mastic tree. He's saying, oh, a home tree. <laughs> Go ahead. Then said Daniel unto him, Well, thou hast also lied against thine own head. For the angel of God waiteth with the sword to cut thee in two, that he may destroy you. With, with that, all the assembly cried out with a loud voice and praised God. Who saveth them that trust in him. Who do what? Who saveth them that trust in him. That what in him? That trust in him. That's the problem with Jake now. They don't trust as a guy. They just trust in the recorders. And that's why they look infamous and stupid online. That's what happens. Go ahead. And they arose against the two elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. Go ahead. And according to the law of Moses, they did unto them in such short as they maliciously intended to do 
to their neighbor. Your sister, go ahead. And they put them to death. Thus the innocent blood was saved the same day. Go ahead. Therefore Chelsea and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna, with Jochim her husband, and all the kindred, because there was no dishonesty found in her. Go ahead. From that day forth was Daniel had a great reputation in the sight of the people. So now we know who explained and revealed all the evil they were doing in the past and up until the time of Susanna. Daniel explained these guys as lusting, this and that. We're reading what Daniel told everyone, and they wrote it down. The scribe has documented it. You understand? So the Lord reveals things to the people. The Lord will reveal things. He'll bring things out in his time. Not in your time, Negro. In his time. Give me Matthew 18, verse 16 now. Go back there again. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two, one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Go ahead. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Right. If you will neglect to hear them, the judges and so forth, let them go to the church. Go before the elders now, leadership now. Go ahead. Tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church. If he neglects to hear the leaders now, the leadership. Go ahead. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. And if, he's, if he neglects to hear the counsel to reconcile, let him be now as a heathen and publican man. You know what that goes with? Heathen and publican man, heathen, heathen man and publican? Romans 16. Have no company with them. That mark, mark them that cause divisions. Treat them as heathen. Do we deal with heathens in here? Nope. No, we do not. Y'all understand? But people will bypass that. Romans 16, that's not what it means. Verse 18 says, and cheat and says, let them be unto thee, let them be unto you as a heathen man or woman and a publican. Because Israel did not like publicans. They didn't company with them. Publicans hung out publicans. Or the young godly hang out with the young godly. Y'all understand? So Christ made it clear if they will neglect to hear the church, bring witnesses first, they try to work it out with them, witnesses there. Now nah, we ain't, I ain't trying to hear y'all either. Okay, go to go to the leadership then. Go to the higher ups now. Because they ain't trying to hear it. If we try to fix it, now nah, I ain't hearing y'all. Captain's office, whatever. I ain't trying to hear y'all either. All right, then get out. Go with the rest of the heathens then. Go with Satan. That's what the heathens got is Satan, go with them. Get um, Ecclesiastes 22, verse 25. Sirach chapter 22, verse 25. Make sure that's all I want. Hold on. Yep, that's it. I will not be ashamed to defend a friend. So the prophet's saying, I will not be ashamed if the time presents itself to defend a friend. Go ahead. Neither will I hide myself from him. And I will not hide myself from him if he's in trouble. I'm going to try to help him. Go ahead. And if any evil happen to, unto me by him. If any evil happens unto me by my friend who I defended when he was in trouble. Go ahead. Everyone that heareth it will beware of him. I'll give an example. You have situations where a brother was accused of stealing or plagiarizing another brother's work. And, and um, another brother said, nah, um, and he was saying, yo, this guy's wicked, he's evil, whatever. And the brother came to his defense and looked at them and said, nah, let's just leave it alone, let's just dismiss it. And he defended him. And that was it, it was done. He defended him. Then when this brother gets in trouble for whatever, audio comes out against him or whatever, he's like, yeah, he's wicked, he's evil. Another example, a brother that was, that was once up here, once amongst us, constantly screwing up all the time. This is back in the Bronx school. Constantly screwing up. Brother's blasting him. He's um, they blasting him. He gets mad, throws his pins down the table. Ugh! Weak, crying, weak, whatever. And always, and me and Lava are always doing this brother all the time. Then brother came up and said, Ah, oh, you brothers are being rough on him. You're being hard on him. Y'all shouldn't be like that towards him. And we said, All right, no problem. Because he was a rank, he was a brother that ranked over us. He said, Okay, understand. But leave him alone, leave him so and so. And we stood back. And the brother decided to escape us, constantly blasting him. He moves over there with him. Then this brother, who he defended, who defended him, he has a problem with him, and now he goes and, and goes and embarrasses him. 
So the scriptures say, read the bottom verse again, the, the, the um, 20, verse 6 again, 26 again. And if any evil happen unto me by him. So if a brother, so if, if I go out my way to defend a brother who's in trouble, and then I'm in trouble, and he goes out of his way to destroy me, <laughs> my, my reputation, yeah. go ahead. And if any evil happen unto me by him, everyone that heareth it will beware of him. He'll become him. infamous. Because he, he was defended by the brother, and the same brother that defended him, he attacks and slanders. So the Lord is saying, beware of people like, people like that. Beware of them. They come to defend you, look after you, and then you spit back in their face. The Bible says, beware of men like that. Beware of sisters like that. Beware of them. Give me... um. First Kings twelve. You forget, you forget this one. You had a brother that had a videotape out there, speaking much evil. Oh, a sister hit us up and wanted us to derank the brother, blast him in front of the congregation. Oh, yeah. You understand? This is this sister keep hitting. We like, what's going on with this sister? Why is she so adamant to destroy this brother? He was well, scheming and she said money. he was scheming. The brother was scheming, scamming money from the congregation, scamming money from people, and we. Uh -huh. Right from her, you know, and this brother he charging for his service and stuff. We like, yo, listen, we are not. Why this sister is so adamant to destroy the brother? We told the brother, listen, you got to fix that. You understand? That's evil. We got to stop doing that. And we, you know, we handle it. Right. But the sister wanted us to destroy the brother, mm -hmm. and the same brother he stood up and. They were partial and wicked and, and so right. forth. You understand? <laughs> Beware of him. Oh, man. Beware of them. First Kings twelve, and. Verse 12. First Kings chapter 12 and verse 12. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 1. Chapter, two, chapter 12, verse 1. I'm sorry. Chapter 12, verse 1. First Kings 12 and 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem. Now, Rehoboam was the son of King Solomon. Rehoboam was the son of King Solomon. After King Solomon died, his son Rehoboam took over. But when King Solomon died, he left behind certain pro issues and problems in Israel taking care of his heathen women. And by him taking care of his heathen women, he put harsh burdens on the people in order to provide for his women. And those burdens remained even while he was gone, when he's dead. So Rehoboam, his son, is now in rulership. He's now king now, Rehoboam. Go ahead. And Rehoboam, and Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel will, came, will come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. For he fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. Right. Then they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter. And we will serve thee. Take all the burdens your father put on us to take care of them heathen women he had. Make it lighter, and we'll serve you. Loosen the burdens your father put on us. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days. Give me three days to figure this out. Three days to figure it out. Go ahead. Then come again to me. And the people departed. Go ahead. Watch this. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do you advise that I may answer? This people. So he asked his higher ups, his father's counselors, who, which, which, which some were his, some were his grandfather's um, counselors. He goes, "How do you advise that I deal with this matter?" I, I, gave, I gave, they gave me three days, to, um, to figure it out. What should I do? He asked the ancients, the men that know better, higher ups, what should I do? Y'all understand so far? Go ahead. And they spake unto him, saying. If thou will be a servant unto this people this day. Even though you're the king, it's your job to serve the people. So you must be a servant to the people. Go ahead. And will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them. Then they will be thy servants forever. If you do right by them, they'll do right by you and you'll rule forever. You'll, you'll, you'll be good. Go ahead. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. He ignored the men over him. He ignored the older men. Go ahead. Which they had given him. Which they had given him. Go ahead. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. And consulted with younger men under him. For example, let's say, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a captain. And I, have a, and I want to counsel against someone. Counsel, a serious matter. 
rather than go to the captains above myself, I will go to the officers under me and captains under me. They don't have, they're not as astute as I am. I'm going to go to them to handle the matter. That makes sense? Do you go to brothers in, in chain of command? Do you report to brothers who are under you, tender matter that gets to you, or over you? Over you. Over you. So when you go under you, that is an example of poor leadership qualities. That's what it is. It makes you uh, credibility as a leader lacking. You understand? Because you, because if, if you're trying to go to men under you, it would appear, I'm going to say appear, so I'm accusing, it would appear as if you're going to reach out to brothers who you feel you can somewhat have influence over to make things go in your favor because they're under you. Whereas you can't really do the same with men who are over you. You understand what I'm saying? Do y'all, who doesn't follow what I'm saying? Honestly, don't be bashful. Okay, go ahead. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that's what the appearance is. Because no, normally, a man of high rank would go on. If the issue comes to his, ear, to his attention, he would report to those who are over him. He'd report to them, report it to them. Because that's chain of command. You go up, not down. You understand? Like Moses. Moses says, listen, if there's an issue between someone, go to the elders. If it's too hard for you, then you bring it to who? To me. He's the hierarchy. He's up. You don't go, oh, go to, the, go to the babies. Ask the babies what's going on. No. You go to the men over you. That's law. I'm not making this up. Y'all understand? Go ahead. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. Go ahead. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer this people that we may answer this people go ahead who have spoken to me saying make the yoke which thy father did upon us lighter and the young men that were grown up with them spake unto him saying thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee saying thy father made our yoke heavy but make thou it lighter unto us thus shalt thou say unto them my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yo, listen, man, you the king, yo. You tell you, you run, you run things. You tell him, listen, man, my father is hard on you. I'm going to be even harder on you. They're telling him this. That's stupid counsel. You got to put your foot down, man. You the king now. Tell him that your little finger is bigger than your father's loins. Tell him that, man. Tell him how gangster you are, man. Tell him you run things. That's what they're telling him now. Yep. Go ahead. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father have chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Because I'm king now. I run things now. Go ahead. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they had gave him, that they gave him, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father... My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. I made things worse. Go ahead. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. He promised Jeroboam the kingdom, of, of, um, of half the kingdom. So... You may say to yourself, well, this has happened because this is of the Lord. That's why this happened. This is nothing to do with Ray Bowman's mistake. This is of the Lord. Some may argue that. The devil is watching online may argue that. Pose that as an argument. But I got to cover my bases. Give me Sirach 47. Let's see why the Lord used Ray Bowman to do this. Sirach 47, 23. So rather than him go up the chain of command, he went under and made a wrong decision. Sirach chapter, Ecclesiastical chapter 47 and verse 23. 23. Thus rested Solomon with his father. Solomon died. Go ahead. And of his seed, he left behind him Rehoboam, even the foolishness of the people. What was Rehoboam called? Even the foolishness of the people. He was a moron. He was an idiot. Read again. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed, he left behind him Rehoboam. 
even the foolishness of the people, and one that had no understanding. One that had no understanding. Mm. That's why he went to his boys rather than to his, rather than go to his higher ups, he went to those who were under him. Because he was foolish and had no understanding. Go ahead. Who turned away the people through his counsel. Who turned away the people and caused a split in Israel through his counsel of his moronic friends. Y'all understand? There was also. That's all I want. Nehemiah 6 and 1. So the Lord said, I'm, this guy's an idiot. I'm going to use him. If I'm going to split Israel in half, I'm going to use this guy right here. He ain't going to follow counsel. He's going to follow the young men. He's going to go under the chain of command rather than top. Nehemiah 6 and 1. Nehemiah 6 and 1. And now, make the wrongest, most dumbest decision ever. Nehemiah 6 and 1. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard. Uh, who? Our enemies heard that I had built the wall and there was no breach left therein. We fixed it a crack. Remember, at this time, this is what I call the true reconstruction era. The Babylonians had destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, knocked the walls down, burned the houses down. Nehemiah and, and uh, Ezra were, were the ones that came about. Well, Joshua and Zubabel came and built the temple. Nehemiah and Ezra came and rebuilt the walls and the houses within the, you understand? So we're now reconstructing Israel back to its former state before Babylon destroyed it during the time of the Persian rulership. So Nehemiah at this point in time, along with the help of Ezra, they're rebuilding the walls. And the heathens are watching as we rebuild ourselves, and they're getting angry. Watching Israel rebuild themselves from a low state back to their original state. Go ahead. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. Uh, the, the, there were still no doors yet on the, on the gates. Go ahead. That Sambalot and Geshem sent, me, sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of uh, Ano. But they thought to do me mischief. Which I set him up. He said, let's, let's go meet somewhere. He was like, nah, these guys trying to set me up. Mm. Go ahead. Oh, no. And I sent messages unto them saying, I am doing a great work. I, so, I, listen, I'm busy. I'm doing a great work right now. I ain't got time to talk to y'all. Go ahead. So that I cannot come down. Why should, I, why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Why should I stop the work of the Lord and come talk to you for? What the hell for? Well, these are heathens now trying to interrupt the work of the Lord. You, that's why Matthew 18 says, treat them as a heathen man. And the publican, because when Jake leave a body here, and the devil gets on them, they're just as bad as the heathens. And you should treat them the same. That's what happens. And so they'll start doing things like this. Try to set you up, line you up, make you look real bad. Same thing. Read on, read on why. I'm going to show you what they do. Watch. And I sent messages unto them saying, I am doing a great work. So he didn't even go down there. He sent his men. Listen, go tell them I said so-and-so. Go ahead. So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sword. Yet they sent him, they harassed him. Now they're asking him four times the same thing. Come talk to us. Come talk to us. You had brothers left a body here. Now they're calling brothers multiple times in different numbers. Trying to reach out. Reaching out to sisters. Reaching out to brothers. <laughs> You're gone. Start again. Leave. Why are you still here? What is happening? Why are you watching right now? What's wrong with you? Are you on medications? No, no, Israel, a lot of y'all ask yourself. I know a lot of y'all tired of, like, y'all ask yourself, why, why is the deacons and the bishop, why they keep touching on these stuff? The reason why is because we're touching on these things is because a lot of you brothers and sisters is, is, is getting drawn into the evil, man. You know, a lot of you is getting drawn, in and drawn into the evil because you all don't listen to counsel. You understand? Now, if these men leave and they, and they just go and just go and just build and do what they want to do, you understand? Now, we evil and you want to, you, the Lord is dealing with you, then just leave and do what you, what the Lord tell you to do. But when you start reaching out to brothers and sisters in our, in our congregation, like right now, I'm getting a brother right now that leave is emailing brothers and sisters in our congregation. If you want to leave, just leave. We're not going to say nothing about you. You're going to just leave, brother, just leave and go do your thing. But when you start attacking brothers and sisters in the congregation, when you try reaching out to brothers and sisters in the congregation and trying to justify why you leave and saying that, oh, we, the leadership is evil. 
You understand? Remember, these are the same men that you laboring with that taught you everything you know. Now they evil all of a sudden. God was dealing with them all the time. But no. <laughs> Just last week, we was righteous. Right. Sitting amongst us, yo, defend righteous. I'm going to defend the brothers. Right. So now we're wicked. Now we're the devil. Now we're partial. It's the devil. You got to right. be very mindful of these grand, fancy speeches. Be very mindful of those. Be verse 5. Then Jeremiah sent Sanballat, his servant, unto me in the like manner. The fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Fifth time. Non-stop. Four times, five times, constant harass, trying to reach out to him, trying to reach him. Go ahead. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. So now here come the slander. It's rumored that you guys are trying to rebel against the kingdom. Go ahead. For which cause thou buildest the wall? That's how you're trying to build the wall. You're trying to, you're trying to cause problems. Go ahead. That thou mayest be their king, according to these words. That you could be the king, according to, their, according to the witnesses I got. Go ahead. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Now he's threatening him now. You're trying to say, you're trying to yourself, um, put yourself as a king now. That's the rumor is. You're trying to put yourself as king. Go ahead. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. So seeing that we have this information on you, come talk to me now. Come talk to us. Go ahead. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest. Man, you lying. That's a lie. Go ahead. For, but thou feign them out of thine own heart. You made all that up. Go ahead. For they are all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. So the heathen are always, and two-thirds alike, Jake's alike, will always try to stop the work. With all kinds of nonsensical videos, interruptions, they will try to stop the work. That's the mission, to distract you, threaten you, slander you. Make things up out the top of their head. That's what heathens and je heathen-minded jakes alike do. It's, the, it's always the same old thing. Give me Luke 20. Hey, but they ain't going to stop the work because you all see what's going on. We're still traveling. We're still going out there, putting in the brick, right. putting, in, putting in our brick. The work ain't going to be stopped. That's like, this is... Like some side stuff we just have to deal with, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it really is a headache. You know, as I said, you all want to leave, just leave and go do what you all. The Lord is dealing with you. Just leave and go do what the Lord tell you to do. You understand? But do not, I keep saying, do not reach out to brothers and sisters in our congregation. You understand? Just go and build. You understand? You you say you build a UIC, what, what Jay-Z said? Make that's what, I'm paraphrasing, but that's, right, that's what right. he said. Right, right. Yeah, go Put another in, one. Go and build another one. Make another one. You home. build this. You understand? You brothers say, you brothers that, that been amongst us and say, oh, I did this and I did that and that. I build our UIC. Go build another one, man. Go build another congregation. You understand? You know, then we're going to see if this brother, the Lord's Spirit is really with this brother. Mm -hmm. You understand? You just sit and take notes like you've been doing. Yeah. Luke 20, verse 1. <laughs> Luke 20, verse 1. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that give these this authority? Go ahead. And he answered and said unto him, uh, to them, I will also ask you one thing and answer me. I'll answer your question if you're going to answer my question. Go ahead. The baptism of John, was it from heaven? Or of men. John's teaching, was it of heaven? Was it from God or was it of man? Was it of himself? Go ahead. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then believe ye him not? Why do you reject him? If he says from God, then he'll ask us, why do you reject him then? Go ahead. But if John if, preached Christ. Go ahead. But and if we say of men. If we say it was of man, doctrines of man, go ahead. All the people will stone us. For they be persuaded that John was a prophet. They know that John was a prophet. Go ahead. And they answered, and they answered that they could not tell whence it was. We don't know. We can't answer that question. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Then I ain't got to answer you either. You can ask my question. I ain't got to answer yours. Go ahead. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. So now after he finished embarrassing them, confounding them, he proceeds to talk to the audience. Watch this. 
A certain man planted a vineyard and let it forth to the husband, husbandmen and went into a far country for a long time. And at, the, and at that season, he sent the servant to the husbandmen that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husband collect. Go ahead. But the husband men beat him and sent him away empty. Get out of here. He rejected him. Go ahead. And again he sent another servant and they beat him also and entreated him shamefully. This is a prophet. It's about the vineyard is Israel, and these are the prophets that were sent by the Lord, and they kept they kept beating the, the prophets and rejecting them. This is a parable. Go ahead. Shamefully and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third. Again he and again he sent a third. And they wounded him also and cast him out. Go ahead. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, what shall I do? Hmm, what can I do? Go ahead. I will send my beloved son. It may be they it may be they will reverence him when they see him. Yeah, they'll respect my son. Surely they'll respect my son if I send him. Go ahead. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, this is the heir. Oh, this is the heir. This is, this, is our, this is our boss's son. Go ahead. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. Well, we can be... In charge. If we kill a son, we'll be in charge. Go ahead. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? So what shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them for killing his son? Go ahead. He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. He's going to kill them and give the vineyard to others. Go ahead. To rule, the vineyard to others to rule over Israel. Go ahead. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And they heard it, they said, Ho hopefully not. Go ahead. And he beheld them and said, what is this then that is written? The stone which the builders... So wait, wait. They said, so they, they said no, that ain't going to happen. He ain't going to kill them. God forbid. So what's Christ asking in return? The stone. Which is this then that is written? So the, if, they, if the answer to you is no, God forbid, what's this that's written right here? Read on. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. What is that about? Go ahead. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. You get killed. Go ahead. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. Try to fight him. Go ahead. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. You know what Christ did? He insulted them indirectly. He just said, what does this scripture mean? It's all about you. You're going to reject me, and, gonna, and this stone that you reject is going to fall upon you and destroy you. In the end. And they realized this. Kill this nigga, man. Kill him. He said, we can't, we can't. People like him. Listen, look, look, look at the audience. We can't kill him yet. They were mad because he made it. He took indirect shots at them. First, he confounded them in the beginning. Then he insults them afterwards, indirectly. Go ahead. Read on. And they watched him. So wait. So after they got checked scripturally by him, what did they do after? What did the evil do? Jakes do afterwards? And they watched him. What did they do? And they watched. What are they doing right now? And they watched him. They watched him. Watched him. Watch them. Go ahead. And sent forth spies. What do they have? And sent forth spies. Who's amongst us? And sent forth spies. Give them information. And sent forth spies. Go ahead. Which should feign themselves just men. Shalom, brother. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom, sis. Most high in Christ bless. Feign themselves spies. You think we stupid in here or something? Yo, y'all stupid out there. That's why you out there. Go ahead. That they may, might take hold Outside of with his, Satan. Go ahead. That they might take hold of his words. That they might do what with us? Might take hold of his words. And record them. Take screenshots. Mm. Read again. That they might take hold of his words. That so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the government. Call the IRS. I'm going to call the IRS on you. See, to practice what you preach. We should call ice on you. To practice what you, what you preach. Damn. Mm. Verse 20. Read on down, please. <laughs> 21. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. I'm just being sarcastic. But again, don't make us like that. It's just, you, the problem is that they think they're fighting against us. They're not fighting against us. They're fighting against God. The Lord's amongst us. And it's evident. I saw so much hatred. I saw that video got so many views because the hate. We have those many haters. And that's okay. Verse 21. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly. Neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Go ahead. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? Go ahead. I'm trying to get him on tax evasion now. 
IRS, same. What are the odds? Ah, I didn't know. That was, you know, continue. I didn't know that was there. I forgot that was there. Mm. Go ahead. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar? Is it wrong for us to pay taxes or no? Oh no. But he perceived their craftiness. What did he do? But he perceived their craftiness. Go ahead. And said unto them, Why tempt ye? Why are you trying to tempt me? Go ahead. Show me a penny whose image and superscription hath it. Whose face is on this coin? Go ahead. They answered and said, Caesar. Caesar's face is on the coin. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's. Pay your taxes. Go ahead. And unto God the things which be God's. And keep the laws. That's it. Pay your taxes. Like we do. Nice try, though. Go ahead. And they could not take hold of his words. And they could what? And they could not take hold of his words. They could not take hold of his words. Go ahead. Before the people. And they marveled at his answer and held their and peace. couldn't say a word about him. Luke 9, 46. Luke 9, 46. Luke 9 and uh, 46. Then there arose a, a, reasoning, a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. Go ahead. And said unto him, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. Go ahead. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And, he, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. Yeah. And Jesus said unto them, For forbid him not. For, we that, for he that is not against us is for us. Yeah. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So what we want is, I'm sorry, I bypassed it, is that they were arguing amongst themselves who should be the greatest. So the disciples had gripes among themselves. They weren't like robots, keep the commandments, keep the laws. They argued amongst themselves. They had issues amongst themselves. And he checked them here. Read on. Continue. And sent messages before his face, and they went, and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Go ahead. Mary have chosen that good part. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you just... And they did not receive him. So he went to a village of the Samaritans, and they said, now you can't stay here. To Christ. Go ahead. Verse 53. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Because, his, because, because they knew he was, he was heading, trying to head to Jerusalem. They said, you want to Jerusalem? You can't stay here. Because they had beef. Go ahead. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this. So when his disciples, James and John, saw this. Go ahead. They said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? Can we kill these people? Can we kill these people here? Burn this village to the ground? They was mad. So the disciples got angry. Being angry is normal. Y'all understand? Read on. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So he checked them. He said, you, brothers ain't, you brothers are not thinking straight. Don't, don't do that. I ain't coming to destroy, I came to save lives. That's why I'm not, we're not going to sit up here and go back and forth. And you call IRS, you're going to call so-and-so on you. We're not doing that. It is what it is. Do what you want to do. But to make those threats and comments, it pisses me off. I can't stand it. Get Luke 22. 24. Almost done. Luke 22, 34. 24. 24, excuse me. And there was also a strife among them. Arguing again, go ahead. Which of them should be encountered the greatest? So I'm showing you is always, always argue. Go ahead. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. For he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he hath, as he doth. Doth serve. I mean, be humble. Go ahead. For whether it's greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. You are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Yeah. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my father hath appointed unto me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on 
thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So Christ knew that Satan wants you. Peter was going to be the elder. Remember, you had Peter, James, and John became the pillars. And James and John were the ones that say, yo, can we kill these people? That was them earlier. You understand? But eventually they became, they grew out of that, they, they matured and became leaders. And Christ said, listen, Peter, Satan wants you the most. He want to sift through you. Go ahead. That you may eat, sorry, Satan hath desired to have you, that you may sift you as wheat. Go ahead. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. That your faith fail not. Go ahead. And when thou art converted. When you are. Remember he said when you are converted. He was already a disciple. Healing. Doing all kind of miracles. But Christ said to Peter. When you are. Because he wasn't converted fully. He was still battling. He had weaknesses amongst him. When you are converted. Go ahead. Strengthen thy brethren. Then be a leader. When you are fully converted. Then strengthen the people. Because he wasn't yet. Even though he had the spiritual power. He was a leader and so forth. He was not built up quite yet. You understand? Hey, Deacon Knighton, what's heavy in that right there is that when you read the scripture, Christ is letting Peter know something that he didn't know. You understand? Christ is letting Peter know that, listen, sit and desire you. You know what I mean? Sit and want to use you. You understand? That's why, you know, the bishop did a class a couple of times, a couple of, um, like last year time, you know, going into anybody could be a Judas. You understand? Satan could use any one of you brothers inside here. Any one of us Satan could use. You understand? So, so but, P but Christ told Peter, listen, I'm going to pray for you. You understand? I'm going to pray for you, but I just let you know Satan desire you. You know? So you brothers keep that in mind. You know, you brothers that's amongst us, especially you leaders, you brothers that making moves, that putting in work in this truth, Satan is going to come to destroy you. You understand? And he could destroy you through many different things. He could, he could come through adultery. You understand? To get you, you might be struggling with the loss of a, 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 a hormonal loss or adulterer loss. He could come to, through you to that, through stealing, through lying, through whatever way he could come to you. It could be through you don't want to forgive somebody, you carrying grudges. You understand? Whatever way Satan going to come to, come through you, come to you and try to destroy you, brothers and sisters, man. Always remember that. You know, always remember that, man. You know? All right, Matthew, 20, Matthew 19, 27. Matthew 19, verse 27. Matthew 19 and 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you. I'm sorry, read again. 27 again. Then, he, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. Stop. He said, We have forsaken all and followed you. Look up forsaken real quick. Forsaken. I'm going to finish. We have forsaken all and followed you. What does forsaken mean? We have forsaken all. Yeah, keep that there. Keep that there. Just keep that. I like that one. Open up, open up another window. Forsaken. It says to renounce or turn away from entirely. So he says, we have, the disciples said, we have forsaken all. What do they forsake? Read the next verse. Watch this. Y'all thinking this truth is all kumbaya, everyone gets along, and all that stuff in life, life's going to go well. No. Read, read, um, read again. Read verse the next verse. 20, the next verse. verse 28. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You guys forsake all for me, you're going to receive even more in the kingdom as rulers. Read the next verse. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters. Forsaken what? Houses. Because if you have more than one house, they forsook it and gave it to those who needed it. Go ahead. Or brethren. They lost their fam brothers. Go ahead. Or sisters. Lost their sisters. Or father. Lost they forsook their fathers. Or mother. So, forsook their mothers. Or wife. Lost their wife. Or children. Forsook their children. Or lands. Lost lands. They gave some lands away that they had that they, 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 they could avoid, that they could afford to um, give away. Go ahead. For my name's sake. Or for my name's sake, for the gospel's sake. Go ahead. Shall receive an hundredfold. 
and shall inherit everlasting life. So the disciples lost a lot in the walk that they were in. They gave away a lot. They lost family. They lost wives. They lost children. They forsook many things. And they asked the Lord, what are we going to get in return? Christ said a hundredfold of that. Whatever that even means. A hundredfold you'll get back for what you lost. So in this truth, they're going to lose some brethren and gain some brethren. Lose a sister, gain sisters. Lose a mother, gain a mother. Lose father, gain a father. Y'all understand? So you can't be all, oh, he left. Oh, no. Listen, you're going to lose some, you're going to win some. That's the walk we're in. Luke 10, 38. I ain't got much left. Luke 10, 38. Luke 10, 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So a certain woman named Martha allowed Christ to come and teach in her home. Martha allowed Christ to teach in her home. Martha, watch this. Go ahead. And she had a sister called Mary. And she had a sister named Mary. Go ahead. Which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. She sat and learned from Christ and heard his words. Go ahead. But Martha was cumbered. About much serving. She was being hindered. She couldn't learn because she was too busy serving no people. In her, so now Martha's doing the serving in her home that she, op- that she opened her house to for Christ to teach in. So she's all hindered and, oh, man, she got much. She has a lot. She's laboring a lot on her table. So, so while her sister's sitting there learning, she's handling things on her own. Watch this. And came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? You don't care that my sister left me by myself and doing I'm handling this by myself. I'm serving you by myself. I need help. Bit so now, one, mm-hmm. so the sister brought forth a complaint to the Lord about her sister not helping her. And rightfully so. Because she's doing it alone. And she has a, a large audience in the house, right? Go ahead. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And he said, he said tell her that. Tell her to help me. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. <laughs> okay. Martha, Martha. Go ahead. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. You worrying too much. You worry about too much stuff. Go ahead. But one thing is needful. One, the most, there's one thing that's the most important. Go ahead. But one thing is needful, and Mary have chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. He dismissed her. He said, yeah, okay, that's nice, Martha, whatever. Some of y'all going to write, I'm write a complaint about Christ. You ain't right. Write a complaint. That's some of y'all doing here. Some of y'all are that sensitive. Martha complained. Christ said, yeah, yeah, Martha, don't worry about it. She's doing something that's more important. You just keep doing what you're doing. He dismissed that. Some things you have to dismiss. You understand? But some of y'all here get emotional. I'm going to write a complaint. Ooh. Over small things. Small, small things. Christ dismissed that. That's how he was. Like, yo, she's doing something more important than all that. You can handle, you can handle your business. You're doing all right. Just keep serving like you've been doing. You understand? So I'm showing you the, the, the demeanor that Christ had. Yeah, the demeanor of what's more important is people learning. All that small complaint stuff, he ain't got time. He ain't have time for that. He said, hey, whatever. Okay, Martha, Martha, Martha. You trouble with too many things. You too, you too worrisome. Well, ah. Just missed it. First Kings 9 and 4. And if thou will walk before me as David thy father walked. This is, this is the Lord speaking to Solomon. Go ahead. As David thy father walked in integrity of heart and what? an up, integrity of heart. In integrity of heart. Go ahead. And an uprightness to do according to all that I commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments. One of the most important things the most I requires in a man, or a sister as well, but particularly in a man as a leader, is integrity. A man must have or retain his integrity. When the elder... Said to us, I don't want no dumb deacons. He used to curse us all the time. He was horrible. Yeah, that, that, hood, his house. that, that hood of feelings. He's man. friendly now compared to back then. Back then in his house, y'all wouldn't last for two days. He destroyed you. I concur. Y'all saw, a lot of y'all brothers got that soft demeanor, soft and gooey inside, Oreo cookies spirit. But back in the elder's apartment, he was savage. But right. again, it was good for us because now we grow right, right. from it. Right, it make us strong. It made us stronger, it right. Made, it made us like... When, 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 you know, like when it made us strong. Like, you know, like I'm a grown man. I remember one time the, the, the bishop, he had, he had gathered me. And I'm like, damn, man, I'm a grown man. Why are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> that's what Satan messes talking yep. in my ears. So like, you're a grown know, man. Like, yeah, like, yo, who are you talking to? Your like, father, you're a grown you're man. A, you know, but, but the thing is, is that these things, when these things 
build your character. You get tough skin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because we are war, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you ain't want brothers around you. You know, something happened. They just break down and start crying. So, you know, things pop up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't want them kind of men around you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just, so, so yeah, man, these things happen to grow, to, to build us up and grow us in the spirit. Look up integrity. Google it. I want the Google one. Integrity. I want integrity. Very important because the elder always, that's why, he'll, that's why he'll say things to you to get under your skin. He'll say things like, you know, I don't want, no, he'll say certain things indirectly to you. And some of y'all may take offense to it. He, he, either, he'll either be talking about you or not, but you'll get offended. It is. Mm. Like, for example, I said earlier, if I throw something out there and you're offended by it, I am talking about you. That's how I leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and say I'll talk about you. But if I throw something out there and you get offended by it, and it's about you. I've heard people say by me online, Deacon Hathan throws rocks and hides his hands. I don't hide my hands. I throw more rocks. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> hide my hands. I throw bigger ones so you know it was me. Integrity. Integrity. The quality of being honest and having, some, having strong moral principles. Moral uprightness. That's in 1 Kings 9, 4, but I don't want that one. Jump down to definition 2. Click translations, please. Click now. Click, yeah. Go, go, go back up to definition 2. Read that. The state of being whole and undivided. The state of being whole and undivided. Read the synonyms. Unity. So when you have integrity, you maintain unity. Unification. You maintain unification in your integrity. Coherence. You maintain coherence. Cohesion. You keep things together. You don't separate. Because when you start to separate, you're losing your integrity. Go ahead. Togetherness. Uh-huh. Solidarity. What's the antonym? The antonym is division. Divisions. See, men that leave have lost their integrity. Yep. Read the antonym right there. Read the, read the condition of being. Read that right there. The condi oh. yeah. Right there, yeah. The condition, the condition of, being. of being unified. So having integrity is the condition of being unified. Go ahead. Unimpaired. Uh -huh. Or sound in construction. Sound in doctrine, mm. in construction. What, what is the antonym for integrity? Fragile. Frail. Fragility. Frail. You fragile. Mm. You weak. That's right. Sissified. Yellow makes you sad. No testicular. no testicular fortitude. Thank you, sir. No cojones. Right. So you are fragile. That's until you lack integrity. That's why now the gifts on you, you you start seeing other see brothers act a certain way. They all nervous. They fragile. They all soft. They, they, they're looking unsure and confused. So the other will get on you. Listen, man, I don't want no damn Judas amongst me. I don't want no damn Judases or weak captains. They'll throw things out there to see who will bite if, they are there, if they're maintaining their integrity or if they're reaching a level of fragility. That's what's happening. To see if a brother are going to take it and, and eat it and deal with it or run away from it and go, nah, you're being evil. You're evil surmising. No, it's not evil surmising. If the elder sees something in you, then just accept it for what it is and grow from it. But brothers can't take that constructive criticism. They go, nah, he's accusing me. He's sending you in front of my peers. Well, Christ called Peter the devil. And Christ, Peter didn't say, hey, Christ, listen, my peers, they were there. You called me the devil. Matthew 18, I'm going to record it, okay? That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Peter ate it. And Christ said, when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. So what was he saying to Christ in front of everybody? You ain't ready yet. Yeah, the power, he had spiritual power. He was a leader. Christ said, you ain't ready yet. In front of his peers. He didn't catch feelings for that. Brothers catch feelings in here and you a disciple? Nah, you're not. You're not. Not yet. Get Job 27 and 5. <coughs> Job 27 and 5. In verse 5, yes. Job 27 and 5. Now, to give you the history of Job in, in brief, I'll be fast. Job, there was a deal between the Lord and the devil. The Lord, Satan saw that Job was a righteous man uh, that, that maintained his house in righteousness and so forth, avoided evil. And Satan said, I guarantee you, take, the, take your, power, your shield from him, your protection from him, and I have him curse you to your face. The Lord said, deal, no problem. But there was something that the Lord saw in Job that he wanted to be purged out of Job. That's why he allowed that to happen in the first place. You got to read Job. Read on. 
Job 27 and verse 5. Job chapter 27 and verse 5. Because his boys are saying, the reason why you're, getting, you're going through all this hell is because you did something wrong. His friends start to blame him. So read what he says to them. God forbid that I should justify you. God forbid that I should make you guys right in, in, in your assumption and your accusation against me for being judged like this. Go ahead. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. Until I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. I will remain solid. I will remain stable in my mind. Get on Proverbs 11 and verse 3. Proverbs 11 and verse 3. So Job maintained his integrity. And when you read the last chapter, the Lord cursed him out. After he judged him, killed his kids, turned his wife against him, turned his friends against him. He said, listen, my family, get it. No, 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 I got to get it. Get Job. Job 38 verse 1. No, 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 hold that. Get Proverbs first. Proverbs first. I'll go back to that. <laughs> Proverbs first. I want Proverbs. that. I'm getting excited. Go Proverbs 11 first. Proverbs. Then I'll get Job. Uh, 11 and 3. 11 and 3. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 11 and 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. The integrity of the upright, of the righteous, shall guide them. Shall keep you solid, cohesive, within the unity. You will maintain that cohesion, that uniform, that, un that unification. You'll maintain that. Go ahead. But the perverseness of transgressors shall... But the shall perverseness of sinners who will try to reach out to you and call you over and over again and try to harass you and twist your mind against those who are trying to help you maintain your integrity, go ahead, shall destroy them. They will destroy your integrity. They'll be in your ear, speaking perverse things, and turn you against your family, who you've known for years, and corrupt your integrity. This is what we've seen this time and time again. That's why, oh, this is the way he is. He'll get on you. It may seem rough or evil or harsh at the moment, but it's done for a reason. When the elder sees the brother's on um, um, failing in spirit, or he looks worrisome or confused, or he sees a weakness in you, he's going to he's going to address it. No matter how you like it, he's going to address it. Whether if you're going to take it and 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 learn from it and go, you know what, you're right. Let me stand strong in this. Or you're accusing me. I'm leaving. No, you have not helped fast your integrity. Get Job thirty-eight and one. In other words, man up. Job 38 and 1. The book of Job, chapter 38 and verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Go ahead. Who are you talking to? You talk, you've been talking stupid this whole time. What are you talking about? Go ahead. Gird up now thy loins like a man. Throw some balls, Job. Man up, Job. That's what he's saying to him. After he killed his sons, turned his wife against him, turned his friends against him, took away all his wealth, mm. all to see if he would maintain his integrity, he said, man up. Matthew 18, Lord, the Lord, the most high is wrong. Matthew 18, I'm going to record you, Lord. You crazy. You crazy. Right, you crazy. The Lord, the Lord put Job through all of that to, to what? To strengthen him. He saw something in Job that he said, I don't like that. I'm going to fix it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, right? Read on. Verse 3. Job, chapter 38, verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. Gird up your loins like a man. Go ahead. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Because I got questions for you now. You have questions for me, and your affliction, I got questions for you. Right. But in the meantime... Man up like a man. So the Lord told Job to man up. This ain't nothing new. The Lord is a man of war. He don't play games. He don't have time to consult. Are you okay? Are you all right? The Lord didn't do all that. That's Barney. You want a dinosaur? Go watch, go watch that. Go watch Barney. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. Look up steadfast again, please. I went over this before. I won't go over it again. Look up steadfast, please. Sirach 5 and 10. I don't want y'all complaining, man. He got done. It's like, yeah, so I'll be taking forever with this class. This class is eight hours. Mm -hmm. I want to hear that tonight. <laughs> do it later, do it later. Okay, give me Esther's then. Be careful what you ask for. Give me second Esther's 9, real quick. Second Esther's 9 and 38. 
Ezra's classes is five hours. I'm trying to cut it down. Second Ezra's nine and um, 38. Just breeze through it real quick, all right, Liam? Just breeze through it. The book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, verse 38. And when I spake these things in my heart, I looked back with mine eyes, and upon the right side I saw a woman, and but. Be- Behold. And behold, she, she mourned and wept with a loud voice and was much grieved in heart. And her clothes were rent, and she had ashes upon her head. So he turns around and sees his sister crying, loud behind him. Go ahead. Then let I my thoughts go that I was in, and turned me unto her, and said unto her, Wherefore weepest thou? Now the Lord has Ezra, this is crazy, the Lord has Ezra in a vision. He doesn't realize he's in a vision right now. So he's talking to a woman, okay, that he thinks he's talking, well, it's not really, well, it's a deep story, but the point is he's talking to a woman. She's crying right now. So he turns around to address her. Go ahead, while she's in her mourning. Go ahead. And said unto her, Wherefore weepest thou? What are you crying for? Why art thou so grieved in thy mind? What's wrong? And she said unto me, Sir, let me alone, that I may bewail myself and add unto my sorrow. For I am so vexed in my mind and brought very low. Go ahead. And I said unto her, What aileth thee? Tell me. She said unto me, I thy servant have been brought barren. And had no child, though I had an husband thirty years. And those thirty years I did nothing else day and night and every hour but make my prayer to the highest. After thirty years God heard me, thy handmaid, looked upon my misery, considered my trouble, and gave me a son. Uh-huh. And I was very glad of him. So was my husband also, and also my neighbors. And we gave great honor unto the Almighty. And I nourished him with great travail. So when he grew up and came to... To the time that he should have a wife, I made a feast. Next chapter in verse 1. And it came to pass that when my son was entered into the wedding chamber, he fell down and died. Go ahead. Then we all overthrew the lights, and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I took my rest until the second day at night. And it came to pass when they had all left to comfort me, to the end I might be quiet. To calm me down. Then rose I up by night and fled, and came hither into this field, and thou seest. And I and I do know, do and, now. And I do now propose not to return into the city, but here to stay, and neither to eat nor drink, but continually to mourn and to fast until I die. I'm gonna kill myself. Go ahead. Then left I the meditations wherein I was, and spake to her in anger, saying, "Stop." Ezra spoke to her in anger. This woman just lost her only son. Took her thirty years to have. She's suicidal. Ezra stops and speaks to her in anger. How insensitive of him. Read on. See what he says. Thou foolish woman above all other, seest thou not our mourning and what happened unto us? Ezra is cursing her out now and calling her stupid above all others. He says, do you not see our people's condition as a whole? He looked at beyond, he was the hell with you and your son. Look at the condition of our people now. Look at Jerusalem, look, it's in heat. Because at this time, Jerusalem was in heaps from Babylon destroying it. He goes, look at your people, look, look at the houses burned down. Look around you, your son, really? Go ahead. And now, how that, excuse me, thou foolish woman above all other, seest thou not our mourning and what happened unto us? How that Zion, our mother, is full of heaviness and much humble, mourning very sore, and now seeing we all mourn and, and are sad, for we are all in heaviness. Art thou grieved for one you son? You one boy? Who the hell is him? We'll look at the nation as a whole. Go ahead. For ask the earth, and she shall tell thee that... It is she which ought to mourn for thee, fall of so many that grow upon her. For out of her came all at the first, and out of her shall all others come. And behold, they walk almost all into destruction, and a multitude of them is utterly rooted out. Who then should make more mourning than she, than has lost so great a multitude? And not thou, which art sorry but for one. But if thou sayest unto me, my lamentation is like, like not like the earth, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains and bear with sorrows. But the earth, not so. For the multitude present in it according to the course of the earth is gone as it came. Then said I unto thee, like as thou hast brought forth with labor, even so the earth hath also have given her fruit. Namely, man, ever since the beginning unto him that made her. Yeah. Now, therefore, keep thy sorrow to thyself. What do you say to her? Keep thy sorrow to thyself. Yo, keep that crying to yourself, man. I don't want to hear all that. Go ahead. And bear with a good courage. And do what? And bear with a good courage 
that which have befallen thee. Maintain your integrity. Go ahead. For if thou shalt acknowledge the determination of God to be just, thou shalt be received thy son in time and shall become and shall be commended among women. He said that so Ezra looked at a bigger picture. He said, put your emotions to the side and focus more so on your nation. You may get your son later on. You don't know what the Lord has determined. So that's why I say to y'all, you got to look beyond yourself. I'm, a, I'm offended. This is offensive. Ezra cursed the woman out of this lost her son. He just died that day. To the hell with your son, look at your people. That's disrespectful to some of y'all in here. If you, if you came and told me your son just died, I would say, man, the hell with your son, look at the people. Be, yeah, deacon, have him demoted. He's wrong for saying that. I get cursed out. Ezra said it's okay. Get it? The evil. So I'm showing you that our people, they, Ezra and them, they were more focused on the mission. Christ cursed out Peter for saying, I'll defend you. He said, nah, you, you're saving things of men rather than of God. I don't want to hear that. You sound like the devil. Stop that. So our forefathers had a certain level of integrity that superseded any kind of selfish, selfish statement, statements. And they had time for that. You know, listen, your nation is in shambles. Jerusalem is burned and so forth. Your, this one son, he's like, nah, I'm good. Take it, deal with that. You'll be all right. Ezra didn't have time for that. Our, that's how our forefathers were. So if you ain't like that, this ain't for you. You can't handle that statement he made to her. It's not for you. Go back to the Christian church. Go to the Catholic church. You can get molested or whatever the case may be, whatever. Do what you got to do. Go to Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. Let them feed you Eucharist cookies and play with you and whatever. Whatever they do over there. Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. Be steadfast in thy understanding. Be steadfast in your understanding. Go ahead. And let thy word be the same. And let your words be as yourself. Steadfast. Definition of steadfast, please. Definition of steadfast. Real quick, real quick. I'm going to get that to you. The time allows, I get it. Steadfast. Resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. Which goes right back to being holding your integrity. It's the same thing. Loyal, faithful, committed, devoted, dedicated, dependable, reliable, steady, true, constant, staunch, solid, trusty. Click more, please. Firm, determined, resolute, relentless, implacable, single-minded. Unchanging, unwavering, unhesitating, unfaltering, unwavering, un, unswerving, unyielding, unflinching, uncompromising. Click down more translations. Then the antonym for being steadfast is disloyal, irresolute. So when you lack integrity or when you no longer are steadfast, you become somewhat disloyal and irresolute. Or fragile. It's the same thing. Because fragile fragility leads into you being disloyal and irresolute. But all those words are related or relative. That's why I said steadfast, standing firm. But when you lack integrity, you're fragile, fall apart. You're all confused and retarded. Get verse 13. Verse 13. Oh. Chapter honor five. and shame is in talk. So honor and shame is in talk. Your communication, your conversation. Go ahead. And the tongue of man is his will. And the tongue of man will be, is his fall. It is his fall. You must be mindful of what you say and the things you do. Next verse. Be not called a whisperer and lie not in wait with the tongue. So be not called a person that speaks evil of someone behind closed doors. And lie not in wait with your tongue. You speak opportunity to speak evil of someone when the opportunity presents itself. Don't do that because that's what Negroes will be doing. That's what they've been doing lately. Read on. For a foul shame is upon the thief. Go ahead. And an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. Why? Because a whisperer is double tongue. They'll say one thing to you, Shalom, Elder Most High Christ's brethren, they'll speak evil of you behind your evil of you behind your back. That's a whisperer, that's a double tongue. And when you're double tongue, that's an evil condemnation upon you. Evil condemnation. Get chapter six, verse seven. To rock six and seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So often, that's why I say oftentimes brothers who come up from the time of the elders 
um, crib to the time of the elders' basement to the time of the Brooklyn school. I keep close relations with them. But I keep an eye on them as well, but I have a closer relationship with them, even in Brooklyn school, because they've been, they've been through the trenches. They've seen come, they've seen go. So I keep more, I'm more closer to them because they've seen things happen, transpire, and live to tell about it. They ain't get bit. They good. Or maybe they are bit, but it's just taking a while for them to transform. It's one or the other. But my eyes are always open. That's what the scriptures say all the time. You must be circumspect. I'm going to show you that. What verse is that, 7? Yes, sir. Read down to verse 9. Verse, verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Some friends are friends for their own benefit. What benefits them. Go ahead. And will not abide in the day of thy they trouble. They will not abide when you're in trouble. They'll turn their back when you when they're in trouble. When they see tr fire come, they go the other direction. Go ahead. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. And there's a friend who being turned into hatred and argument will bring shame to you and try to embarrass you through social media particularly today. So read that verse again, verse 9. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife. Turned into hatred and strife or what? Will discover thy reproach. Discover your shame. Verse 13. Separate thyself from thine enemies. This goes back again. Not only to heathens, but also those who separate themselves. Romans 16, Matthew 18, 18. Same thing. Go ahead. And take heed of thy friends. And be mindful of who you call a friend. Take heed of you. Don't get too comfortable. Because oftentimes, brothers, high ranking to low ranking, we get comfortable. And we, and we get too, at the elder brought out that term, familiar, familiarity breeds contempt. When you get so friendly with a brother that they use it, they, eventually they turn on you. They feel that they're equal to you. I saw that Solomon said in Proverbs 25 and verse 6, don't sit in the place of a king, nor in the place of great men, because they start to forget who the king is, or who the leader is, and who the servant is. So to lose sight of that. Now, they, like for example, with a parent. A parent will let their child call them by their first name. And after a while, the child will start calling you, hey, what up, Tyrone? Yeah, what up, man? What's up? And after a while, you're no longer dad. You're no longer the father. Now you're the friend. And they get older, disrespect you, punch you in the face, steal from you, lie to you, because you're not their father. You're their friend. You understand what I'm saying? As the scriptures also say, beware your children also. Give me Hebrews 13 and verse 7. Let's put this back in the mind of the people because y'all seem to forget. Hebrews 13 and verse 7. So when we bring these classes out, as annoying and repetitious as it is, it's necessary because some people lose sight of it. Hebrews Hebrew, 13 and verse 7. Hebrews 13 and 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Remember them which have the rule over you. Go ahead. Who have spoken unto you the whole the word of God, uh -huh. whose faith follow, uh -huh. considering the end of their conversation. Come to verse 17. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. It comes back with again. Obey them that have the rule over you. Go ahead. And submit yourselves. And what? And submit yourselves. And what? And submit yourselves. And submit yourselves. Submit yourselves. Go ahead. For they watch for your souls. What do we do? For they watch for your souls. Because we look out for you. The class is not to attack and go back and forth. It's because we watch for your souls. We know some of you in here are, are very easily moved. You're not unwavering. You're not unflinching. You, 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 you have very little integrity. And it's taken a while. You have to build it up in years. It comes with experience. It comes with rise. It, it comes with rising. It comes with falling. It comes with situations. And brothers, that's why I asked early in class, who was around during the time of the elders' crib? Who was around during the time of the elders' basement? Who was around during the time of the Brooklyn school? Who was around during the time of the Bronx school? Because brothers, like, who've been around that long, they know what I'm talking about. That's why Captain Stephen, they're like, who, Captain, who left? Oh, okay. Pass the bread and wine, please. You don't care. Because it's happened over and over again. We know, so, but some of y'all who are new, he left. Oh, someone take care of my heart. Oh, Zoinks. listen, stop. I'm going to go cry in the sink. Hey. Listen, come on with that, man. Come on with that. I got to go up here. Stop this. Hey, Deacon. 
Somebody, somebody reached out to me and said, oh, uh, have you ever experienced something that's, it's this magnitude? I said, keep the commandments and stay in the spirit. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the name of the class. Stay in the that's spirit. It. Magnitude, this ain't nothing. <laughs> this is the beginning. I know I see it that big yet. It's small. <laughs> but read on, read on verse 17 again, the bottom part, but they watch what? For they watch for your souls yeah. as they that must give account. Now, we must give account because if we stand by and let these things go on and y'all get bitten, that blood's on us now. So we must give account. Go ahead. So if you bounce, it ain't our fault. That's your decision. Go ahead. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy. And we do it out of joy. Go ahead. And not with grief. And not like we're forced to. Some of us, the leaders, they weren't, they, they weren't really sincere. They did, it, they did it because they were, they, they were made to. They didn't really want to do it. Okay, I started complaining and go, you trying to send brothers to different states and countries. You can't tell brothers to do that. Sure we can. The problem is you're too scared to do it. Because to you, this truth is a grief and not a joy. Brothers who love this truth, love their people, will go anywhere they're sent to go. It's for the benefit of their people. Anywhere. It don't matter where it is. I'll do it. I'll, Ella says, go to Jamaica. Okay. I'm going to Jamaica. It is what it is. I don't care. It's for the better. It's beyond me. It's bigger than me. But brothers don't have the integrity to understand it. They go, oh, it's about self. It's about me. What about what I want? What about what you want? It ain't about what you want. I guess I told the woman, the hell with your son. What about your people? It ain't about what your son is. about your son. It's about your people. Stop being selfish. Stop being scared. If you're scared, then step down from your position. It ain't for you. Hey, um, read Joshua 1 and 16. You know, what you said that Deacon Iten, I'm going to show them that in the scriptures. Right. You understand? And I'm going to show you all this, the man that, when you go back in the time of Joshua, when you read the book of Joshua, you understand? Joshua was set, was set up to, 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 um, to, div, to, to set up the, the kingdom, to give the land and inheritance to Israel. Joshua was set up in a time of war. You understand? Because the way out Joshua and, the, and, and um, Israel got those land is by war. So the men and them Joshua had with, with him, they were war-minded. You understand? And I want you all to see how these men used to think. Okay? So read that scripture for me. Joshua chapter 1 verse 18. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment. What? 16. Oh, 16. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. What did they say? All that thou commandest us, we will do. And so, we'll so they say, All you command us, Joshua, we're going to do it. You understand? Whatever you command us, we are going to do it. This is loyal soldiers. You understand? Loyal men. You understand? And the reason why they was like this is why. Keep on reading. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. And what? And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Because you got some people talking about, man, you can't tell me to move move to Jamaica or to move to, to Texas or to move this place or that place. I'm a grown man. You understand? But if you mil if you war mind and you know you understand the understand the mission that we are war, you understand and what, what you going out there for is to do what? Is to build a nation. You ain't going to question that. You understand? But some of you brothers selfish. And you thinking about yourself. That's why Christ said, whatever you lose, for his name's sake, you're going to get it a hundredfold. You understand what I'm saying? Some brothers have to leave their job, pick up to go to go to a state that they never that they never been to to deal with congregation over there. You understand what I'm saying? And that right there is what we start doing in our UIC. You know, we see brothers is needed at, in this state. You understand? We're going to send you over there. You understand? And this is what Joshua, this is what we're reading about right here. Read that one more time again. Joshua chapter 1, verse 16. And they answered Joshua saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. And any, any place you send us, we're going to go. This is brothers that was war-minded. Brothers that was about the mission. You understand? Read on. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. So they said the same way how we listen to Moses, 
we going to listen to you, Yashua. You are the leader. You tell us to go. You want us to go spout this land. Whatever you want us to do, we're going to do it. You understand? Read on. Only, only the Lord thy God be with thee. Be, be, only what? The Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. So what is it the men and them that was following Moses understood? What did they understood? They understood that, that um, the men and them that was following Joshua and Moses, they understood that the Lord was dealing with them. You understand? That's what they understood. They see the works that Moses was doing. They see the works that, that Joshua was doing, and they know that the Lord was dealing with them men. That's why they say, whatever you tell us to do, we're going to do it. Because they know the Lord is dealing with these men. But not you brothers today. You understand? Some of you brothers, you all question us. You understand? You all thinking the work we're doing is our work. No, it's the most high work. But keep on reading. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment. Because you got a lot of rebellious brothers, man. A lot of rebellious brothers amongst us that rebelling against the commandments of God. Read on. It will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. So these is loyal men right here. No, we ain't going to do that today. We ain't doing that today. But what we need is you brothers, when you see fake, phony, when you see disloyal men, brothers come to you, plan, trying to plant that evil in your ears. Oh, you're, you know the leadership is wicked. You know, they unjust. They wicked and, and brothers come to you with that, cut that brother off and report it to us and let us put him out of here, man. You understand? Straight like that. Any brother come to you with that, let us know. You understand? He got to go. But yeah, this is the kind of men that we want to roll with. These is right. loyal brothers. Men, I don't, men of integrity. Men of integrity. These men had integrity. These is the loyal men you want to roll with. Mm -hmm. yeah, Acts 20 verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over that over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. The Most High has made us overseers. That goes back to being um, serving the people, looking over them, have, taking an account for them with joy and not with grief. It's the same thing being said, overseers. Go ahead. To feed the church of God. To feed the church of God with the milk of understanding so that when any opposition comes against them, they're prepared for it. The milk feeds you, sp strengthens you spiritually, strengthens your bones spiritually. So you, we could withstand any blow that comes against the congregation without, without, being, without any wavering. Go ahead. To feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Which Christ died for. Go ahead. For I know this. Christ, Paul, Paul said, for I know this. Go ahead. That after my departing. When I'm gone. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Go ahead. Not sparing the flock because they're going to only focus on destroying the flock go ahead also of your own selves also of your own selves amongst you your own peers go ahead shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them after them so again i'm showing you that paul made it clear scripturally speaking it's brother zebra is saying there's sin in the body of course there is there has to be because paul said right here you're going to have people among you speaking perverse things, trying to take disciples out, of, out, out with them. So, of course, there's sin in the body. If there isn't, the God isn't dealing with it. If it's completely perfect, we shouldn't be. We should be in the kingdom. A perfect congregation is the kingdom. I'm not sure what kind of world you're living in, the world of, of I don't know what world that is you're in. But scripturally speaking, there's supposed to be sin in the body. There's going to be sin in the body. That's why we have days of atonement. That's why we have repentance. We repent every day. No one in here is perfect. perfect. We're striving for perfection. There's sin. People coming in from different walks of life, battling all kinds of things. Of course, there's sin in the body. Are you stupid or something? I mean, that's my own question. Yes, you are stupid. Read on. Therefore, watch and remember. Therefore, he says, watch. Going back to being an overseer. Watch and remember. Go ahead. That by the space of three years... I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So Paul, this, so Paul warned and did the classes for three years about grievous wolves entering in. Grievous wolves entering in. 
grievous woes entering, and he was crying. He said, I'm telling you, when I'm gone, be mindful. Watch these Negroes. Watch them. Watch them. So y'all mad about my one class. Paul said three years he did it. Three years warning them. Three years. That's a, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of repetition. Read on. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Which is able to what? To build you up. The word of God and of his grace is able to build you up. Go ahead. And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So the word of God is able to build you up. So when something comes against you, you're able to withstand it. You're able to, to, to maintain, be steadfast and maintain your integrity. Almost done. Give me your first Corinthians 11 verse 19. Hey, so when, when Paul said before he leave, leave us, we going to enter in. When you read the scripture, Galatians, mm -hmm. all ye foolish Galatians, Galatians, who have betrayed you. Mm -hmm. When you read the letters, all the red letters that Paul wrote, he was dealing with brothers that came in the congregation and bringing heresies. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. that, that day shall not come until there be a falling away. First, how we started? He said, let no man deceive you. You understand? So grievous wolves. Yes, grievous wolves came in and was bringing heresies and was destroying brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new, man. We live in these things all over again, and we got them grievous wolves here again today. Right. Like there's a movie that Tom Cruise did called Edge of Tomorrow, where he kept dying over and over and over and over again, and he kept getting killed by the alien over and over again. Then after a while, he started getting nice. He was like, rrr, rrr, he started killing him. He, got, he started seeing people dying around him. For, he was like, oh, he's going to die. I can't save him. Rrr, rrr. You watch the movie, he's crazy. You got to watch it. But he, in the movie, he's trying to save people at first. He's trying to save them at first. They're getting killed and crushed by machines. And after a while, he was like, man, the hell with them. I got to save so-and-so. He starts getting, because it was repetition. It was battle after battle over and over and over again. So likewise, in here, up here, in some captains and officers amongst us, We've been to the edge of tomorrow. We've seen the same thing over and over and over again. So we're like, yo, he left? Oh, he left? Something wrong with him. She left? Oh, something wrong with her. Oh, whatever. Sisters, too, it built like that. Oh, she left? Oh, okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Most of God's best sis. All right, she's gone. All right, let me make, let me make some bread real quick. They don't have time. They've been around long enough to know what's going on. That's why they laugh from now. Because they built. So the men that leave out of here, that's sad. Women are staging you, man. That's sad. Their minds is good. Y'all men, they don't know what's going on. It's sad. It's a sad thing to see. Hey. But, it, but again, it, it comes from experience and time and studying and maintaining integrity, which maintains unity, which maintains unification, which maintains cohesion in the body. The Lord requires cohesion. Gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. That's what the most I wants. If you try to separate from that and cause division, you become fragile, disloyal, irresolute. You're a waste of time. You're a waste of life and time. Now you're just a view on the camera now. Right. Hey, hey, check it, man. When I say, you sisters, you all got a role to play in this also. Your husband come to you with some evil stuff. Like this one sister, right. her husband came to, her, came to him. She said, she said to him, yeah, her husband came to her, sorry, uh -huh. and, and, and told her that um, about um, the AM Sabbath, AM Sabbath yeah. trying to convince her to follow the AM Sabbath. Man, she checked that brother so hard. <laughs> you know, she had to correct him. You know, she correct the brother so hard, then she let us know, yo, this is what my Lord came to me with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, then the brother tries turning it around. I didn't really believe that, but you sisters, y'all got to be like that, man. Mm -hmm. You understand? Your brother, we keep going off. You got to let him know, listen, man. You know, and that's one, not what the scriptures say. And one sister moved out of her father's house. He followed the same doctor. She said, I'm out. You're going off. Moved out. The daughter left. So sisters have to maintain integrity also. It's not just one side of here. Women can maintain integrity too. Like the sister in Second Maccabees lost all sons. She maintained her integrity with a manish stomach. Because some men in here have womanish stomachs. <laughs> you don't know. You know what's happening. That's why you, you're falling. You're falling one by one. It is what it is. We're going to grow from this. It don't make a difference. Read right. Corinthians 11 verse 19. First Corinthians this chapter. And this, this and Matthew, and that's it. First Corinthians 11 and 19. For there must be also heresies among you. There must, there must also be heresies among you. Must, must be. Like Paul said, I warned you about grievous wolves. Go ahead. 
For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. That those who, are, who, may, who will maintain their integrity or maintain their steadfastness may be shown among you. I mean, the real separated from the fake. That's what he's saying. There must be heresies brought into the body separate, to separate the real from the fake. That's what it's for. Matthew 18, verse 7. Woe on Matthew 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Go ahead. For it must needs be that offenses come. For what? For it must needs be that offenses come. For it must needs that offenses come. Go ahead. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. But death unto that man by whom the offense comes. To them grievous wolves, to those weak men, it says woe unto them by whom the offenses come. So again, we all must remain in our steadfastness. We must remain in our integrity until the kingdom comes because people are going to come. They're going to come. They're going to go. Regardless of what rank they're in, they're going to fall. Some are going to rise up. Some are going to fall. If you're not man enough or woman, if you're not man enough or woman enough to deal with it, you are in the wrong place. And with that, I say shalom. That's it. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.